<clears throat> hello, hello. How's everybody doing? How is everybody doing? We are here for Classic Cast, our very first Classic Cast of the Classic WoW Beta. We are very, very excited to be here. We have Ben Ruki here with us. Stay Safe TV, Tips Out Baby, of course. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, welcome guys. Um, a lot of you guys know who uh, Ben Ruki is. Ben Ruki is a very high-end arena player, caster as well. Ben Ruki, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself for those of us who uh, might not be following the retail WoW scene uh, more Hi. recently? Yeah, sure. Um, so I've been playing the game since vanilla. Um, really long time. I started getting into the competitive scene when Arena came out. I uh, was heavily into duels and 3v3s and basically all aspects of WoW, mythic rating, everything. And yeah, uh, after years and years of competing, I think I competed from 2007 to 2015, I decided to get into showcasting. So I've been streaming for the last six years as well as doing um, showcasting for the AWC 3v3 tournament. And yeah, just been a part of the WoW community for a really long time. Ended up winning BlizzCon in 2012. And yeah, that's basically it, I guess. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Badass. Yeah. So, like, I mean, we, we know like a lot of people have already seen your video. Uh, if, if you guys haven't seen it yet, uh, you should go to Ven Rookie's YouTube channel and check out his video about uh, why he's so excited for classic. And, and you, you originally, like, you weren't like a big classic guy. Like, you were just kind of like, whatever. Like, it's not my thing. I want to play arena and do all that. Right. Yeah. So, when Nos uh, Nostalarius, I don't know how to exactly say it, but when that server got shut down, mm -hmm. a lot of people were complaining, and I, I totally I got it. I was like, man, people put a lot of time, a lot of effort into playing on that server, so you know, that getting shut down, it sucks. But for me, I wasn't that interested. I played vanilla. I felt like I had really experienced the game, and I wasn't that excited to go back because, as someone who's dedicated, you know, ten plus years into the arena scene, the thought of going back to a version of the game where that just didn't exist wasn't that appealing to me. So while I was sympathetic to all the people that wanted to be classic for myself, I guess selfishly, I just would have rather them make the current game as good as possible. But yeah, mm -hmm. kind of going back now and playing classic, it, it feels like we'll that dream of them kind of bringing back all the things that I loved about WoW way back in the day bit more far off than just playing classic yeah yeah for sure and i know like yeah um, yes Jason, if you want to go ahead well i was going to ask like just coming back and playing for the first time in a really long time vanilla wow what are the like biggest couple differences or biggest things you notice like wow this is totally different so i was actually ch i was chatting with one of my friends uh yesterday and it, it really felt like there's too many things to name it's like every five like if i'm having a conversation about it i can just consistently name off things over and over but I think the things that have stood out to me the most is actually feeling like you there's a community, like it's a community yeah. game. That's the best thing. Like having a guild, having friends to play with, needing to group up with people, actually needing to play with other players in the game. Not only does it better yourself, but it also feels good to help people out. You know, it's like a mutually beneficial relationship to all these different people that you're meeting. Um, the immersion in the zones, um, the satisfaction in getting a level because it is more difficult. I mean, I think we can all agree if you guys played, I don't even know if you guys played Battle for Azeroth, but mm -hmm. Battle for Azeroth leveling was probably the least fun yeah. experience ever. It just, as you leveled in Battle for Azeroth, your character got weaker. Yeah. It added hidden scaling. So even though you're higher level than someone, your character was just worse than them. Yeah. And it, it just wasn't that fun. Whereas this, once you get past level 10, Every single little talent point you put in is actually impactful and meaningful. And playing it is a lot different than thinking about it in the past because in the past I was like, well, you know, I really did like those talent trees, but maybe they weren't the most impactful decisions, but that's wrong. Like it, you really feel it when you put a point in improved Blizzard and it completely changes your rotation and your ability to now mm -hmm. AOE grind. Yeah, like, so I, I think even though it's just like a talent point here, a talent point there, like the amount you can customize your character, it just feels super good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's totally true. Retail while leveling is also, compared to vanilla WoW or classic WoW, retail while leveling feels very linear, right? You sort of have to go on this set path. You don't have many options or ways you yep. can level differently. In vanilla WoW, classic WoW, you really have, like it's an adventure. Like there's no, there's nothing telling you where to go. You just that, have to figure yeah. it out. That's one of the things I, I love as well. Opening up a quest log, you know, having to read the quest, like adventure around on the map. I feel like, so I played a couple 
this is going to sound silly, but I played um, a couple of mobile games on my stream, RPG mm-hmm. mobile games. And in a lot of those mobile games, they have basically like an autopilot mode where you just like put it on autopilot and your character will just run around and play the game for you. <laughs> and I think BFA leveling is as close to autopilot mode as you could get without actually having it on. Because uh, yeah. like you said, yeah. you pick up a quest, it tells you exactly where to go. Everything is super shiny, easy to pick up. Whereas in uh, Classic WoW, you get a quest. It actually feels like a quest. You have to read where you have to go. The mobs that you're fighting are actually dangerous and can kill you. You accidentally pull two monsters. All of a sudden, you need to paw. You need to use everything. If you didn't have full HP or full mana, it's a nightmare. And it just feels yeah. a lot more rewarding to complete things. Absolutely. Well, yeah, dude. I mean, like, with, with retail WoW leveling, like it, it's so trivial. If you're a new player to WoW, you've never played BFA, you've never played WoW before, you buy it, you go to the store, you buy BFA, they give you a free 110. Like that's how trivial the one to 110 experience is. Yeah. It doesn't even matter for, for your game. And like mm-hmm. 20 years ago, if you put quest markers on a map in a game where they told you exactly where to go from point A to point B, or exactly which chest in the water temple to loot to get the key to open up the next door. Oh, like, man. That, that would be considered like a cheat for something like that. Or like, you know what I mean? Like it, just, mm-hmm. it, it wouldn't, yeah, it'd be boring. It's like you'd go to cheatplanet.com specifically to get <clears> some <throat> kind of code to, to freaking put in on your N64 controller so you get stuff like that. <laughs> Nowadays, it's like streamlined into every single game. And it definitely, it definitely hurts. Yeah, it definitely hurts the experience. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that, and, and you hit on this is uh, it's, it's what I, like I always talk about this is how classic WoW uh, it, you just have this constant feeling of progression. It's like a series of small wins, right? So like you were saying, like you level and, and your decisions matter and, and it matters like where you put your talent points and stuff. Like I think it's really cool that uh, you as somebody who like, you know, we weren't really looking forward to this and you weren't really even thinking about it. Um, like you recognize that like immediately. And I think that goes to show like for a lot of people who maybe are like more retail players and like, okay, like what's this classic thing all about? Let's check this out. Like, do you, do you think like that? Uh, I mean, you were obviously more in the high end arena scene. Do you think that your other guys who are, like more high-end arena players are kind of noticing the same thing. Do you think the average player is going to notice the same thing? What do you think? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I've had a lot of the people, you know, there's a lot of streamers that are my friends, like Snut, Sony Digital, yeah. uh, CDU, you know, very high-end arena players, BlizzCon champions. You know, they have been basically playing classic nonstop since they got the beta. They haven't really touched live that much. And I, I think, like, I, we were talking before the show started, and one of the things I said I was most excited about is for everyone to, like, be able to log on and experience what I'm experiencing right now because these last like five or six days, I think five days have been like the most fun I've had streaming in years. Like Mm -hmm. every single day I'm excited to log on and play the game. And I know like the tasks that I want to do, if I want to level, if I want to farm like a very specific piece of gear, um, like I I just, I can get that done and I'm really excited about it. Um, As far as, I I don't know if that actually answered your question. No, no, no. I I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you do. Totally. Like, I mean, I think that, uh, I, I think that these guys, I think it's important because if you look at a lot of the big streams in the WoW section, not all of them, but but a lot of them are uh, are like big arena streams, right? That's yeah. what people want to watch. That people want to watch like competitive gameplay and stuff like that. Um, and I think that you have these guys who they're playing a game with, you know, there's no rating system, right? There's no rate. Well, at least they, there's a ranking system eventually with the honor system, but everybody knows it's not mm-hmm. that great, but it doesn't matter. Like it, it, now it's a lot more like, you can't necessarily point at the scoreboard and say, well, yeah, look at my rating, right? Like check my rating. But yeah. I think not being able to do that actually opens the the door and opens the discussion a lot more for like, okay, who's who's the best at this? Who's the best at that? And it makes it more exciting, I think, mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, people like trying to like, oh, like, you know, Ben Rookie's my favorite or Zico's my favorite or whoever, right? Um, mm-hmm. I, I just think stuff like that is cool. Um, for us, like I know for me, I, I kind of stopped playing after Burning Crusade. Uh Stay safe. You stopped playing, or you 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 picked up, you played all the way through Wrath, didn't you? Stay safe. I really stopped uh, at the start of season nine, so the start of Cataclysm. Okay. But I always came back and tried uh, the beginning and the and the end of each expansion, and it never really like I, I stopped like really playing at the start of Cataclysm. That's when right. I changed. And you then tip, tips. When did you when did you stop? Because you played through, you played through. I played Mop, through. Right? Uh, I played through. Uh, yeah. So I I like. I played every single expansion for at least like some section of it, mm-hmm. but uh, like stay safe. The beginning of Cataclysm after those first two months, there was a big dungeon nerf that happened to all the heroic dungeons, and it was like kind of a big deal at the time. And like it like turned a lot of heads and stuff. 
there, when that blue post came out, I quit the second day, like right after that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was basically like the start of Cataclysm. They had recognized some of their mistakes in Wrath when they had made the game a little bit too easy. So they decided to, you know, tune up the content for heroics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But then apparently, like a lot of people quit or a lot of people weren't happy with that. And so they completely buckled and they went back to how they were before. And then that's when I was like, this game is no longer for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I, I think it's, I just think it's really interesting. Whenever you have like, you have this game that, uh, I mean, it's, it's like 15 years old and now all of us, right. We, we all, have, we all played the game differently, right? Like I, I did a lot of arenas. Like I did five V five Omega lol. Like yeah, five V five, not super balanced, whatever. But I, that's I, my like, favorite by the way. I dude, I loved burning crusade five V five. Five V five was, so was badass. Yeah, yeah. It was so good. But, uh, I, uh, I was, I like to do five V five three threes were good too. I just didn't have like a, a consistent team. And, uh, like that's, that's kind of like what I mostly like to do as arena back then. But then uh, kind of coming back and seeing like so many people from from different like eras of WoW playing classic like on this beta has been so unbelievably fun. And it's just exciting to see because it's almost like uh, watching these beta streams is almost like this crazy crossover episode. And I think that's why everybody's viewership is so high because it's like, oh, look, like, you know, S fan CD or S fan Advin Rookie. Like, I mean, just even the, like us running outside Scarlet Monastery a little while ago and like yeah, just getting yeah. like little skirmishes. Like, people like we're just Pog Champ. Like, it's, it's so funny. Like, people are going nuts. Like, it's it's just stupid. Like, little level 30 PvP. But, um, but yeah, I, I think that's probably one of the things that's been best for like the viewing experience. And I think it's helped the WoW section a lot, like, as a whole. Um, just kind of bringing everybody together and especially for a lot of the viewers who uh, maybe have been out of the wow scene, right? They, they haven't really been watching wow or whatever, but then they get to come back and they get to watch like a bunch of people come back. I think that's been really cool. Um, what are your impressions of the beta so far in terms of like how you remember things as somebody who's consistently played through, like, is there, is there a lot you remembered from vanilla? Like as far as like mechanical stuff, or is it just like you, you kind of forgotten a lot of things? So I'm, I'm starting to remember, mm -hmm. like I, today I started getting a little bit more into like duels. And then yesterday I was getting a little bit more comfortable on my role as a mage, like running into a raid and I could, I was like, oh wow, I actually can just Nova everybody and they can't do anything about <laughs> it. That's great. You know, so I'm slowly like coming back into my element. Obviously it's a completely different game than live. You know, I have fireball, frostbolt and arcane missiles all on my bar or I was on live, you know, depending on the spec, you only get those abilities. So I'm like having to rethink my key binds. Like what did I do in vanilla? What were my strategies? Um, yeah. So it's been a little bit of a learning process, but it, yeah. it's kind of cool to see that I'm remembering stuff from so far or yeah. from so long ago um, and like my own gameplay and my own strategies and stuff. Yeah. Um, do, uh, of, oh, go ahead. Do you, do, you, do you like that more sort of playing the class instead of a specific spec, how it is in, re in retail? Yeah. I, I like it. I mean, I like it a lot more. I, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things. I mean, okay, so when, when it, you know you're running around on a mage in a dungeon, you're pressing frostbolt most of the time, right? Like mm -hmm. people will be like, "Man, this rotation is so boring." <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, it's actually not boring. I don't know. Yeah. I thought that as well. I was like, just pressing frostbolt. People don't remember vanilla yeah. rating. Like that's not fun. But then when you do it, and in addition to pressing frostbolt. You have right. to worry about like weaving in your mana gem and yeah. look, you you can decurse like you're the only person in your group that can decurse in this dungeon. Yeah. If you don't decurse, you're completely screwed. So you have to weave in decurses and then okay, I do have mana. Let's dump that mana, do like really heavy AoE. Like I'm gonna Nova everything and Kona cold them. I just did insane burst damage. Oh my mana's low. I guess I gotta wand a little bit to recover. Okay, I guess this is a good time to Evo, or should I save my Evo for the next pull? It's like there's a lot of different things to consider, you know stuff like buffs and decursing and mana management yeah. like those things i guess turn out to be fun because i've been enjoying it quite a bit yeah like, I, I think there's more i think one thing i'm starting to realize well i not starting to realize as i've realized over the years is there's more to playing wow as a damage dealer than just doing damage you know i think people got way too hung up on that mm -hmm. and it's actually one of the reasons why i haven't been using damage meters on my stream at all a lot of people ask for them but i feel like Takes away people being it. so damage meter obsessed like mm -hmm. oh my class has to do the most damage or it's worthless i think actually ruined the game really okay yeah i, I think that's interesting yeah it, it, it's funny how uh it's funny how like just putting yourself in that situation will like remind you of a lot of these little things like you know whether you're running around in the uh, canals and storm wind like stay safe is doing right now uh, as we can see on his reflection in the background uh, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, but no, it's it's funny. Like it's cool that you can see you can see all that stuff. No, I, I look. I was I did all craft this week. Literally, me and Asmongold were running around grinding mobs while we were on all craft. So yeah, <laughs> so, yeah like it's. It, I think like it's it's gotten to the point where like it people speaks love this volumes, game. man. The it game does. is so fun. You just don't want to stop. Yeah. I'm addicted to this game. Dude, it's so good. It's it's unreal, yeah. man. It's unreal, and, and it's like. I I'm like I like I said this earlier like I haven't left my house. <laughs> it's just a bit of came out like I've been holed up. Yeah, I haven't left my house. It's it's, it's actually pretty bad. So uh, yeah, I gotta I gotta get on that. Maybe uh, we'll, we'll take the night off. But um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, I think um, something else that you were talking about is like the the uh, the rotation. It seems so simple, right? And I think whenever you play vanilla WoW, you have to learn how to be creative. There's like a lot of creative freedom that you have in playing your class that a lot of people don't consider and it's like using stuff outside of the scope of your class outside of your spell book even right with different items or uh things that you know, might not seem like they're part of your rotation but like you said like your mana gem and stuff like that and making sure you're like you're doing stuff at the right pace popping a consumable at the right time uh mm -hmm. another thing is like optimal time for you to pop like a like your, your your trinket or if you're arcane like arcane power like when you use it do you use it at the right time in a boss fight or like whenever you have another proc go up use your arcane power and all this stuff um I think that's one of the big things about vanilla that people don't understand is like it's not uh, <clears throat> like DPS rotations and stuff like that aren't always like about a perfect rotation. It has to do with timing and um, mm -hmm. there's a lot of other factors too, like you said, that damage meters can kind of take away from. I, I think damage meters are like the hype thing and, and it's it's fun to watch. Uh, but yeah, it's not all about damage. It's, it has more to do with like being able to provide to your raid and being able to get the job done, right? It's not always about yeah. your own numbers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like a perfect example of this are Warlocks and Molten Core. You know, Warlock mm -hmm. DPS and Molten yeah. Core is really, really, really bad. But you want three or four of them because they have banishes for the trash. They have uh, soul stones and hellstones and summons. And they have the curses to debuff, you know, Curse of Wreck, Curse of Elements, mm -hmm. Curse of, you know, all the stuff. So they have a ton of value, even though, you know, just if, if, if their only merit was their DPS, you wouldn't want to bring them at all. <laughs> yeah. But, but they provide so much else that justifies, you know, having three or four of them in the raid. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. Uh, sorry, I said okay because I got kind of distracted at the end there. Uh, there, <laughs> there is. Uh, we got some breaking news. Uh, I, I just want to touch on this real quick. Um, we can go ahead and go into it actually. So uh, a lot of you guys know that there is going to be a stress test. We were talking about this before, uh, before we went live, and we were like, yeah, well, they haven't said anything about the stress test. So um, it looks like there is a blue post out on the stress test. Let me go ahead and make sure that I can get this up for you guys uh, so you guys can see it up on the screen and we can go ahead and read it off together. I've not read it yet myself. Um, let's see. Let me just give me one second here. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, this is good. Okay. Uh, transition. Okay, nice. So uh, this is WoW Classic Stress Test 1. Uh, <clears throat> this is from Bornak, Community Manager. We'll be performing our first stress test for WoW Classic on Wednesday, May 22nd from 4 to 6 p.m. PDT. Uh, during this time, the closed beta test realm will be unavailable. Those who are currently in the beta test will only be able to log into the stress test realm during this time, and beta testers can participate using their existing installation. We'll also be adding a significant number of players to the stress test from the pool of people who have already opted in for the beta but have not yet Ooh. been selected. So, yeah, make sure you guys do that if you haven't done that yet. Uh, since the same client is used for both our stress test users and our normal beta users, the name in the Battle.net app has changed to Beta and Stress Test WoW Classic. If you've been selected to participate in the stress test, you'll see this option appear in the region slash account drop down menu. So you can download and install the WoW Classic client in advance, but you'll only be able to see the stress test realm when it becomes available. For the stress test, all races and classics will be available for creation, but the maximum level will be set to five. Hey, that's good. 25 that's good. minute speed runs. Here we go. <laughs> the, <laughs> the test will also take place on a PVP realm. But since the starting areas are sanctuaries, you don't really need to worry about attacks from the other factions. If you just want to level up to five, we expect to put lots of people in the starting zones, though. And we're looking forward to seeing what you all do as we test the servers under crowded conditions. We'll be actively monitoring the server, sending server messages, ETC during the four to six PM PDT period. And it's important to have as many people as possible log in during this window. So, Hey, Make sure you guys get ready for that. Uh, the stress test realm itself will be available until Thursday, May 23rd, becoming unavailable around 6 p.m. PDT. If you encounter any issues during the test, you can submit them through the bug reporting tool in game. If there are any aspects you'd like to discuss, feel free to post in the classic forums. Performing tests like these are very important in contributing to a smooth launch on August 27th, and we appreciate your support. So, yeah, uh, big news. 
We so we, yeah. Do you want to go ahead? And, I, this is kind of like this, you brought this up beforehand, Stacey. So if you want to talk about it, this is exactly what they have to do. I think they mm -hmm. should do one to five, and also I think they should do one to ten. The one to five and one to ten. You know, the first ten levels, it's going to be a hellhole yeah. on launch day. Yeah. Probably the first couple <laughs> launch days. So it, it this, was bad enough. Really cool. It, it was bad enough. Yeah, already. Yeah. But it, it's going to be really cool to see. You know, because they're not doing dynamic respawns to see, like, how comfortable is it in these zones with with all. The so um, this is going to be a lot of fun. I encourage yeah. all you guys to try to log in or opt Absolutely. in if you haven't. Absolutely. Like, like uh, for those that, that didn't participate in the first day of the beta, like leveling was bad enough with 10 people in, in the starting zone. Like literally every single mob was dead in the Valley of Trials for a good couple of minutes before it respawned. I can only imagine with 800, 1,000 people in Valley of Trials, no dynamic spawns, leveling that first day of Classic launch is going to be absolutely insane, man. Mm -hmm. so crazy yeah it's it's gonna be it's gonna be really wild guys and and we could even see that a little bit like there wasn't that many people logging in but there's certainly like different choke points right uh starting in like the human starting zone for example it's like ta tags are key right getting the tags because one big difference between classic wow and retail wow is that there's not shared tags on mobs so going in and like you pick up the cobalt vermin quest everybody is doing that quest the first quest that you can get the first quests that you can get everybody is doing them so if people are out tagging you and getting those quests done faster, you have to go figure something else out. You have to go like grind on something or whatever to get through it. Uh, otherwise, you're just sitting around like freaking just you know thumbing your nuts or whatever until until vermin spawn and, and you don't want to do that. Um, but yeah, there's there's uh, several things that have happened throughout this beta. Like people have found uh, bugs or things that they think is bugs or think are bugs, excuse me, uh, because they've been playing on private servers or because they don't remember properly. Like I know that like I, I personally have have been there. Uh, I think pretty much anybody has been there who, who's been playing on private servers like, oh, I think this is a bug. Oh, wait, it's not. Uh, or, you know, you just get confused on something, right? Like, let's be let's be real. Um, and I think that's been really, really interesting to see. Uh, I, I like that a lot, just kind of to get to go through. And um, there is a list of things that uh, Kyvax, the community manager, has actually talked about that's uh, on a not a bug list. Things that people have been reporting as bugs over and over again. But they're like, nope, that's how it was in vanilla. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second. Uh, they've talked, they, they brought this up a lot. They're 1.12 reference client. So they have a, um, they have a version of the game, though, the 1.12, the original retail vanilla version of the game that they can load up and it can work. It's not distributable. Uh, one of the first blue posts, it might've been the first like dev water cooler that there was for classic wow or for wow classic, uh, mentioned how they wanted to go through the development. And that was the first thing they tried is they wanted to redistribute this. Uh, they, figured out okay they couldn't and then that's why you have the game the way they have it now where it's the current game stripped down to try and make it as classic as possible so um so yeah that's kind of the goal with what they're trying to do um is there anything that you guys want to talk about some things that you guys have found as bugs or what are some things that you guys were surprised by that you thought were bugs and then uh turned out to not be bugs or whatever i mean i i can start if you want yeah, uh, one ahead. of the main things for me was I originally, because I've been leveling a mage, that's the class I play mostly, mm -hmm. and um, I was doing AOE grinding with Blizzard, mm -hmm. um, and one thing I noticed immediately that I thought was a bug, but it turns out is not a bug, is when you use Blizzard, I forget how often it ticks, but it ticks every like few seconds or seconds, mm -hmm. second and a half, something like that, um, but if you start channeling a new Blizzard, the tick won't reset, so it actually continues from where it was, so like if you use Blizzard, and then right. use a second blizzard. You have to actually time your it your second blizzard for when your first blizzard hits. Otherwise, it appears that the second blizzard isn't doing damage for like one or two seconds. And yeah. I was like, wow, this is a big bug. And that's something that's completely different on live because it does tick out instantly. But that's just like an example of something that seems like a little buggy. But now that I've played with it and I know that, it actually feels really good because I can sort of manipulate the ability and like do it a little bit better than other people. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. I would say the big one is the hit boxes. That's like oh. uh, the, the, the like the hit the boxes. Hit box? <clears throat> not not just torrent. Like generally speaking, I tweeted mm -hmm. this the other day. The hit boxes are so much larger to the point where a rogue can no longer dead zone a warrior. It's like typically the way rogues do warriors on private servers is they'll put your crippling poison. They'll go into the dead zone about seven yards away, so you can't charge or intercept um, when you get out of combat. But at the same time, they're you know close or they're far enough so you can't hit them. In classic WoW, you will always be able to hit a rogue in the dead zone. It's actually insane. Um, and it really changes the meta. On top of that, hunters can be dead zoned very, very easily because if you're within like 8 to 10 yards of them, 
they won't be able to shoot you, which is actually a big, big nerf to hunters too. So the hitboxes seem really, really big, supposedly not a bug, but if you want to see a really cool clip about it, I think Perplexity has a really sick clip where both him and Tribe rolled hunters or both him and Tribe rolled Torin, and they're attacking each other from like 15 yards away. Um, which is really, really cool. Plus, there's something something to do with this boss in Wailing Caverns. I can't remember the full story, but, uh, you know, something about him doing a lot of damage. And, uh, yeah, it turns out it's not a bug, actually. But, yeah. All right, all right. Basically. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, one thing that I've been dealing with, I've been playing with an imp for my Warlock, and uh, I actually don't know if this is a bug or if this is just the way it goes. Um, if I command my imp to start casting Firebolt at some other monster, um, if my imp isn't in within LO, isn't in LOS of that, like if he's not already in cast line of that, he won't cast. So I have to position myself and move my imp directly so the imp was in, is in uh, cast line. So my imp will not move himself to go cast. I have to move him. So that's oh, really? sort of been that's been sort of clunky. I don't know if that's how it's supposed to be or if not. Uh, not I'm not sure. Really, that feels like a bug. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I, I wonder. I wonder how the because I didn't I didn't like play a warlock, so I I don't know. That's really interesting. Um, yeah, I think like, you know, speaking of that clip tips that you brought up with the, the Torrens. Um, so one thing that's interesting and, uh, I, I don't know if I can explain this without being able to like draw it in paint or whatever, but so if you have two Torrin, right, if you have two Torrin and they have like a seven yard, let's say a seven yard hitbox versus like a five yard hitbox, um, or five yard range or whatever, whatever the number is, right. Or the verbiage, excuse me, the proper verbiage, <clears throat> but you know, for the sake of understanding, let's say hitbox range, whatever. Uh, if they have two more yards, if you have a Torin versus a Torin, they're both going to have two more yards. So really what ends up happening is you're adding four yards distance between the two. So whenever you have two people rolling Torins, that's why it looks so ridiculous in that clip. And, and a lot of people are like, like, whoa, what the crap? Like, there's no way that's right. But uh, it's it's kind of deceptive, right? Because you're generally not going to see two Torins fighting against each other unless they're in a duel to, against each other because there's no like arena where Horde fight against Horde. Uh, it's all BGs and it's all against the faction. So, or if it, against the opposite faction. So that clip does look a little bit worse than, than what it actually is. And I, I kind of think that's, uh, that's something interesting that I haven't seen too many people really bring up. So yeah. Hmm. Clip where, it, if somebody has the clip, if, if you guys wouldn't mind posting it in chat so people understand. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing I've noticed is, uh, the batch windows and I, I don't know. I, this is one that I, I really don't know. Uh, so damage is batched. So a bunch of stuff is batched, right? They added spell batching into the game. And we talked about this on Classic Cast. Uh, whenever they they after they, had, they after they had added spell batching, excuse me. Um, and and one of the points that I brought up was, you know, I, I was kind of worried. Are they going to do spell batching properly? And you know, do we even understand spell batching properly as like the average player or whatever? Um, to me, it seems like the batching windows are really really big. And there's certain things that just feel delayed. Like uh, I know I was talking to Monkey News, and he said that uh, he said that like Peo was was stunning his charge for one. And I noticed that like whenever I judge people, there's a really big delay before the actual damage hits, and whenever I hit my button, and there, there's like a, there's supposed to be like a minor delay, right? But it it seems really really big. Um, mm -hmm. That was one thing I noticed. I know I hammer of justice a stun or a charge. Uh, which is, you know, I stunned a charge as well whenever I was dueling a warrior, and I was, like, really, really surprised by that. So I, I don't know, like, um, batching is definitely in the game, but I don't know. This is something that I, I like, I genuinely think I could be wrong about. Maybe I'm just misremembering. Uh, I think I would have realized, or I, I think would have remembered if the delay was that big. I think another another kind of thought that I have is the delay was that big back in the day, but everybody's internet is so much better now that the delay feels incredibly long because you're mm -hmm. like playing like on 30 ping instead of like 200 or 300 ping. That's, yeah. that's what I think mm -hmm. might even be the thing. Cause they, uh, like whenever we got a chance to talk to them in Irvine, they said like, yeah, they're, they're supposed to be delayed there. It's supposed to be batched. So I think whenever you add those things together, uh, it ends up really changing it a lot. And I think for that reason, like, I, I don't know, maybe that's something that they've really got to account for because it just feels, it feels really like, I don't know. It feels, it feels weird sometimes on certain abilities. So hmm. what, how, how do you guys feel? Did you guys notice anything like that? The biggest I, thing that I noticed was the looting. And that's the most annoying thing. When you loot something or go to loot something, it takes you like three, not three seconds, but like it takes, there's a significant delay whenever you loot a mob. Like uh, how many times yeah. like, has it happened where you go to loot something and you think you looted it, but you didn't loot it. And then you got to go back and loot it again. It looks well, like what they did was they, they just added, 
They literally, it feels like they just literally added a 0.3 second delay onto everything in the game. We'll check it out. If you're alluding something, I don't know if you guys have felt this or if you guys in the chat have watched a streamer do this. Sometimes the loot window will be like, you won't even see it. And then other times um, it will sort of linger there. And that's, the, uh, that's if you're looting at the end or the start of the batch window, that like, that's what results in how long the loot win window is there. So you're absolutely right. It affects looting. Um, but yeah, I've, I've had, um, I've feared other Warlocks fears. Like I felt that. So it's, it, I don't know if it's longer, like it was so long ago. I, I can't, you know, over 15 years, I can't it's, tell yeah, one, it's hard. one fucking 10th of a second or whatever. Right. It's really hard <laughs> to determine, but, uh, it, it feels a little bit longer than private servers. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think, yeah, I think that's, yeah. I think you bring up an interesting point about internet. And I, I think that's something that we definitely have to consider because there's a lot of things that are different about the, you know, the way our capabilities of playing the game back then and how it is now. Like before we started the show, we were talking about dungeons, for instance, and then maybe they feel a little bit easier now, but I, I kind of feel like that's just because people are so much better at the game. Um, so like I was using the example in Wailing Caverns, like when as soon as we pull extra mobs, it's instantly sheep, Nova, the extra guy. Everybody's crowd controlling everything, and uh, I feel like a lot of the lessons we learned from over the years like made that feel, um, you know, a little bit easier than maybe it felt back in the day. But maybe it is pretty similar um, in terms of like the spell batching. It was actually kind of cool. Uh, so I was actually dueling Peo as well, and he ended up gouging my blink, and I haven't experienced something like that in a really long time. Right, I was like, man, you can make those little outplays. But I haven't noticed it. I've been doing a lot of like AOE grinding and looting a lot of mobs. I haven't even noticed really the delay on the loot. But it's interesting you guys bring that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, I think some of that stuff where people can like take advantage of batching and, and play it up to their advantage. I, I think it might end up being much easier than uh, than it was back in vanilla because of that. I don't know. A bunch of people said they had like seven ping in in two thousand four. Like I don't know what what the crap kind of internet you guys had. I had like. <laughs> <laughs> like two, I had I had two to three hundred ping on DSL, so that's that's what I I because I know because I specifically <laughs> remember if I was sub two hundred ping, it was green. No, no, yeah, if I was sub two hundred ping, it was green. If I was over two hundred ping, it was yellow. And then in one patch, they like ninja changed it to being over three hundred ping makes it yellow. So everybody thought that their internet or like they they thought the game was less laggy, even though that's not what happened at all. They were just like just kind of deceptively change it on them, but just by changing the colors. So uh, yeah, yeah. So that's just kind of how I feel. But uh, is there a, I sorry, this is kind of a, I guess it's kind of on topic, but I feel like there used to be an add on I used back in the day that would show me my leg on my cast bar and I yes. could cancel cast early. Well, I, I, I don't remember what it was called. Back. Yeah, I don't remember what it was called. Stay safe. Everyone had that, though. I know what you're talking about. Um, I didn't use it, though, and I don't remember that. Quartz. It was quartz. It was quartz. Yeah, I remember that. It was quartz. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if something like that would work again. I remember that because what I remember doing is like I that's whenever I got to the point where like I would like spam heals and I would stop spamming heals and I would just like wait until I got to the bar and I would just ch ch so I, and like it was like yep. yeah it was, it was good it was really good yeah, yeah. quartz is good so yeah I think um, I, I think it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out so because I've noticed like certain things where maybe just because the batch window maybe like I said maybe it's not bigger uh, and I said it's it's very very possible that like I'm I personally am misremembering or maybe it's the combination of maybe the batch window is the same and people's internets are better and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, I think I think that's gonna be really interesting to see. <coughs> um, I think that uh, I, I kind of want to go over this uh, the rest of this uh, not a bug list. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and pull this up for us too, guys. This is another blue post and this was updated 20 minutes ago as well. So again, this will be something that's very interesting. Uh, let me load this up. Three, two, one. Ready break? Sweet. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is from Kyvax. Um, as we've discussed before, the nature of WoW Classic sometimes invokes different memories for different players, and this leads to certain misconceptions for some about what is or isn't working as intended. The following is a list of commonly reported gameplay in WoW Classic that is not actually a bug and is working as we expect it to. Torn's hitboxes and their melee reach is slightly harder, larger than other races. This is what you know. This is the thing we just talked about. Being critically struck while using slash sit to sit does not cause abilities like enrage, blood craze, and reckoning to activate. Uh, this is this is something that, that we can have like a fun little discussion on this. I, I posted a video on my YouTube channel about this where I was testing some stuff. If you guys want to go check that out, um, using the automatic quest tracking option does not auto track newly accepted quests. It instead will start to track an existing quest once progress towards an objective is started. Warrior health regen on the beta is working at the expected rate. Mm, that's good. Mm -hmm. 
Quest objectives and the points of interest are not tracked on the minimap or map. Uh, completed quests are marked on the minimap with a dot, not a question mark. Feared players and NPCs run fast. Standing on top of other players while facing away allows spells, allows spells and attacks to be used. I, I didn't really un quite understand the context of this one whenever I read through this uh, earlier, so maybe we can talk about this if you guys understand it better than I do. Um, creature respawn rates are much slower than in Battle for Azeroth. This was a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind of how it goes in Classic. NPCs which offer multiple quests may inconsistently display them as a dot or, a or an exclamation point on the available quest list. They were inconsistent in 1.12, and we've reproduced the exact inconsistency that they had back then. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quests that are too low level for you do not show up as, a, as an exclamation point in the game world. Available quests do not display an exclamation point on a minimap. Uh, this is an interesting one. I, I didn't remember this. On level up, the message, your skill and protection increased to 15, was added in 1.12.1, and we're intended to keep that. Basically, it says your spec, your skill and whatever your three specs are increased to whatever. Um, you are unable to polymorph enemy targets that are tapped by players with whom you are not grouped. This is something else I didn't remember. Uh, I guess if you had already tapped a the target, then you couldn't polymorph them anymore uh, by the end of Classic. I did not remember that. So, um, so you so you can't grieve somebody by polymorphing no. their right mobs so you can't you can't it. grieve them by polymorphing their mobs uh at all levels of player characters and enemies aggro radius is set to the intended distance i know this has been a big topic of discussion yeah i thought it was radius. way smaller i thought it was mm -hmm. too small but uh that's it is what it is yeah so that's that's very <laughs> interesting so uh they do have like a working 1.12 client with everything so how they're treating this beta is uh I know, like, look, I, I've done a lot of testing on stream, and I, I think we all have, and we've been reporting bugs either on or off stream. Um, or, like, you know, just talking about it on stream, reporting bugs, all this stuff. Um, I think that's the big thing. Whenever they get their bug reports, they get a report, and, like, whether or not it's a bug or not, they go through and they say, okay, like, this is interesting. Let's double check this. Okay, this is right. Or, oh, you know what? Something is messed up here. We, we really need to figure out how to port this properly. Um so this list is, is I think, really good that they're kind of uh, they're being kind of candid with, OK, we've checked these things out. And we're getting a lot of reports of these things. Chill out, guys. This is OK. This is working as intended. Don't don't worry about reporting this anymore. We appreciate your guys effort. Right. <clears throat> um, I think I, I think that's incredible, like how how uh, how active they've been with the community and just like the, the transparency. Right. Trying to make sure that like, OK, we're getting people involved. They're, they're slowly putting out more and more ways, more and more people getting into the beta uh, and, and using people's feedback uh, to try and, I guess, just double check everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys agree. Maybe people in chat won't agree with this. I actually think they've done a pretty good job of picking people. Not, not I'm not saying the four of us. I'm not saying that, but they've done a pretty good job. <laughs> they streamers. have done a good job picking people yeah. that actually know a lot about Vanilla WoW. Like, I actually think that they have. There's a lot of very knowledgeable players that are playing an actual report. <laughs> so, yeah. Feels yeah. good to get selected. <laughs> so this, this is this is something we should talk about. Like, I know, like, I asked the guild, uh, the guild that we're in, you know, make Azeroth great again, of course, uh, our, our guild on, on, uh, on the beta servers. But uh, I asked the guild, I was like, hey, what year did you guys start playing WoW? And uh, everybody said 2004. Now, I, I, I would venture to believe them, uh, at least this morning they said that. Like, we asked last night and there were some people who said, like, 2005 and stuff. I, I, I would venture to guess that they're telling the truth, seeing as how it's not Twitch chat and uh, automatically saying, like, oh, me, me. So I, I think they were probably being honest when they said they started playing in, in 2004 or 2005 in the last couple of days. Uh, so it's cool to see that they're trying to get people with um, – early uh who, who started playing the game have older accounts like a little bit more priority which is uh which is something that uh they did say they were going to try and do is try and give some some players who have older accounts priority um but something else let's talk about this is something that i think like some people are like uh I i've seen it come up a little bit it's like oh like you know they're saying like you know the these big streamers have the beta or whatever like you know take asmongold or uh soda poppin or tim or, or any of these guys like oh these guys get the beta shroud uh, and then other players don't get it. And I think one of the bigger reasons is uh, to, to mitigate a loss of hype. And uh, I, I think that people need to uh, – I, I think people need to understand, like, how how big of an impact having streams that are, like, that big. Like, you have guys like like Soda, Asmin, Tim, Shroud. All these guys are pulling 20K-plus views streaming the classic beta. So with one person streaming it, they can get – literally tens of thousands of eyes uh, on the product and you see people i had somebody message me the other day and says hey i've i've reported 
800 I, I've, I've counted like 800 bugs in in the classic beta just from watching people streams like I, I really wish I had the beta and I was like dude you are the perfect you are you are the perfect person for this right because this is this is exactly their goal is they want people who are excited and it, it's unfortunate right because in my opinion I wish they would have put out more people in the beta I, I really do wish they would have put more people out in the beta uh, and they're going to continue to do that so we'll see where it goes but that way it's like they retain the hype for their product, but at the same time, they're getting good testing in because everybody, when something is bugged out, everybody sees it. So there's yeah. good and bad to this, right? There's good and bad to this because sometimes there's something that's just like a minor bug and then like everybody acts like the sky is falling or there's something that like, hey, like this is something that's actually legitimate and then you see people posting on the forums and giving feedback and uh, we've seen this over the course of the last year or so or maybe even a little bit less than a year. Uh, they've been pretty... They've been pretty responsive, and it's it's been really cool to see how closely they've been working with the community. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It, it seems like with giving out beta keys or beta access, they're sort of giving it to two demographics, right? There's the streamer, content creator demographic, and that makes sense. It's for advertisement, for hype, like as Juan said. And then there's, and you know, th this yeah. is what I tried to sort of mention a, mo a moment ago. There are a lot of like really turbo vanilla nerd mm -hmm. private server players, and you can Omega little private server, but these are guys, a lot of these players have spent a decade digging through databases and old comments and things like that and a, a lot of those like really big vanilla nerd guys they've actually gotten in they've gotten in and it's those guys that i was talking about mm -hmm. that are you're, you're watching their clips of the one the 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 attack range clip the tips mentioned stuff like that they're getting these people in these guys are really getting in deep and uh so that, that's yeah. what i was trying to say well, well and i think the biggest thing with that is like whether or not like you remember something from privacy or not it's it's right or wrong right that's not the point the point isn't whether like oh this is a bug the point is is like hey let's double check this and then they report it to blizzard and blizzard can check like okay like let's say we copy and pasted this stuff over and then they look over and like oh look we didn't you know we, we, we screwed this up here we screwed this up there so it at least gives them like kind of an alert to go and check on the stuff and be like nobody you're wrong or like hey you know what this is actually something worth looking at. So I think it'll be, uh, I think it'll be really interesting to see how this goes. And as, as more and more people get involved in the uh, more and more people get involved in the beta. So, yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious what they're going to do after the stress test. Are they going to let everybody that does the stress test get into the beta or are they going to like bring people in and then say, it's okay, bullshit. that's it. You know, gates are closed. Goodbye. See you next week. Like, how's that going to work? What I hope of, they like, let everybody in. Just, just kind of seemed in. like the way they worded it is they're going to, yeah, not, just... like not everyone's getting it like this is a they tried to like it felt like they were being very specific that this is a stress test and it's not the full beta yeah i uh um, for me i kind of i kind of my, my impression of it was that they were going to get in uh oh, really yeah because it's like uh let's see mm -mm 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 -mm. those who are currently in the beta test will only be able to log into the stress test and beta testers can participate using this will also be adding they said will also be adding a significant number of players to the stress test from the pool of people who have already opted in for the beta but have not yet been selected so i guess it could go either way right because they're saying they're, they're saying adding a significant number of players to the stress test from the pool of people already opted in so maybe it's like the, the way that they're phrasing it it could be okay we're just adding them to the to the stress test or we're going to give them the full beta after the stress test. That's what I would hope for. It kind of depends on how many I people. I hope are. everyone gets it. I, I hope yeah. that they add they add everybody to the stress test and then open up like a fresh server that people can roll on and, and, and they can they can do another fresh. Uh, <laughs> fresh. Okay. Uh, they could do another fresh test for, um, uh, for, for the new people coming in and everybody else. If people want to roll again and, and basically check, check it out on a fresh with like instead of having like a, a few people in the beta test at first, now you have, let's say, a few thousand people in the beta test at first and seeing how that goes after the stress test. That's what I would hope they do. I, and I think that would be cool. Yeah. So yeah. How, how do you guys feel about that? Yeah, I agree. That's a really good idea. I, I've been getting questions in my chat. Like, are they going to, you know, let you continue your beta character progress on full release? Like, absolutely not. That's, that's, yeah. that'd be crazy. That'd be super, super unfair, right? For the people that got in. But I've actually I been think, trying I think it's not sure about that. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why they've been going. Yeah, I just, I, I just got, got word, guys. Yeah. I just got word. They don't want everyone to start at the same time. So they're going to let us keep our characters. You know, it's a little bit of an advantage, but not that big of a deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. actually crazy how many games do that nowadays. Like there's actually games that do that where they let you keep beta progress just because they don't want everybody leveling the same zones at the same time. Well, and it's like the concept of like early access, right? And that's the difference between this and like your typical early access thing that you'll have. And it, it, that's, that's not what this is. This isn't like an early access WoW classic. It's, 
a genuine beta test. It's not, uh, it's not just a hype marketing thing, even though like that seems to be like that's what it's turning out into. I think for a lot of people, whether it's the the people watching streams, whether it's the people waiting to play the game or watching YouTube videos or whatever, or even streamers, like they sold you on it, for example. And I'm sure they sold a lot of other guys too, Van Rookie. Yeah, um, I think a lot. Of, well, I just wanted to kind of add on what you said go ahead, um, go ahead. about like it being fresh eyes. Like I got the beta, but like I'm I don't remember a lot. Like I played vanilla WoW, but I don't remember a lot and it's been really helpful to have people who are really hardcore into classic wow in there, like telling me that's a bug. Like I should report this, like pay attention to that. And then people being like, no, that's not a bug. Like that's exactly how it was. And it, people have like conversations and um, I, I feel like I get a lot more information that I can sort of pass on um, from that. And I do think it is cool. Like a lot of, a lot of my friends that don't play, they still have a wow sub. But they don't really play wow anymore. That used to play vanilla with me got into the beta which i think is really really cool too yeah yeah speaking yeah. of bugs real quick uh trial i'll just rank, link this in the chat i had not seen this yet so apparently they did address the elite damage values oh yeah i was, um, I was gonna bring that up next actually yeah, yeah <sighs> sorry good uh well oh, they, they addressed it or, or the the issue it looks like they addressed it yeah will you I will, mean, you, will you will you link the will you link it in discord yeah yeah sure this seems specific to horde side but i'll, I'll link right there yeah, link it in the Discord so I can pull this up. Um, yeah. But did, did Blizzard address this, or is this just the post on the forum? Yeah. Oh, so there it is. K-Bags responded. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is something we can bring up. But this is from the Classic Wall subreddit. Um, let's see. This is from the Classic Wall subreddit. So let's bring this up here. Um, <clears throat> so one thing that people have been noticing. Let's preface this, actually. Let's preface this. One thing that people have been noticing is that it seems like mobs are not doing enough damage uh, more specifically elites and in, in my experience, I don't know how you guys feel about this uh, For me, it seems like the elites in dungeons uh, The elites in dungeons seem to be not doing as much damage but the elites out in the open world seem to be just fine But I I mean do, did you guys feel the same way or am I? Um, so one example I can give Vegash who's the sort of like the hogger boss of Dunmoreau um, He's mm -hmm. like the the ice yeti level 11 elite Mm -hmm. um he you know at least compared to private servers he has less hp and he doesn't hit as hard so that's one observation so i i feel like world elites are also a little bit weak okay i mm -hmm. was i was able to take down two elites of my level while still having half hp as a warrior it doesn't make sense at what level but, uh like 25 ish and okay. the uh the turtles and the black fathom deeps events uh they did 12 damage each hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. That's like, it's a level 20. They're like level 26, 25 elites. And they did 12 damage. Each. Yeah. I think, um, and that's the thing. That's like, whenever you compare stuff to private servers, like you, you never really know. Right. And that's like what safe save is like saying, he's like, he's like, it's on a private server. So who really knows? Right. Yeah. Uh, cause you know, whenever t stay safe, stay safe is like, like top one, of, like he's like a top tier leveler and, he, and he's had a lot of practice on private servers. So, uh, that's just like one of those things where it's like, yeah, he's seen this a lot, but whenever you do so many reps, like you can do something like quote the wrong way so many times that like you kind of forget how to do it the right way, right? It's kind of the same thing whenever you, you're exposed to the price so much over and over again, there's like little discrepancies that you're like, I don't remember what's real and what's fake, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this post. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the only time I've really encountered that, and I, I mean, for me, I don't remember how hard elites were supposed to be, but uh, in Hillsbred Foothills, the quest in the very southeast corner I think it's called Dungarak, where you have to kill elites. It's like the final part. It's the final part of one of the chains there, where you have to like go into this fortress, this dwarven fortress, and fight off the elites there. A lot of people in my stream are saying like this seems way too easy to how yeah. it was on the private servers. Right. So I guess they, they felt like they were too weak in comparison. Okay. Uh, maybe they were off on the private servers. Yeah, I mean, and, and I think like at the end of the day, like you kind of have to. Uh, I guess I won't say you have to, but I think it's it's safe to default to like okay, if is it right on private servers, wrong as right, right or wrong on the private servers, you can probably default to it was probably wrong, but made by the third party, not the people that yeah. actually made the game yeah. originally. I think that's pretty safe to say. But here, let's yeah. go go ahead and look at this post real quick before we before we get too far off topic. Um, let's see. Okay, transition. Nice. Uh, okay, so. Um, 
Kaivax responded to explain the discrepancy in mob damage between vanilla and classic beta, like a 200% difference. Kaivax said, hello, we figured out there is an issue with stone skin totem. So really, this this doesn't really address the issue entirely. It's just for Horde or really yeah. more specifically for, for shamans, right? So this is really just for like one class. But uh, basically, it isn't correctly removing its melee damage reduction when it expires. So we've seen an examples given where the player had previously grouped with a shaman and carried forward the effects of the totem. Oh, so it's like stacking. Wow. Yeah. Exactly. We're, we're, yeah. Or maybe it's not stacking, but at least it's it's uh, it's not dropping. Well, this would be a horde only issue, right? But right. This, this problem is prevalent on Alliance as well. So right. what about retribution? Maybe maybe there's something wrong with, with like, not, uh, uh, devotion, devotion or, or something. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, uh, yeah. No, because whenever devotion or is canceled, your armor on your character screen is gone. How does how does like what are the what are the actual mechanics of like stone skin totem? Does it uh, outright like increase your uh, armor like devotion or does? Yes, it increases your armor. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe you can look at your uh, your character sheet to test that, and if it does that, then uh, if that's what it does, then uh, maybe maybe there's a similar difference with devotion aura. So, um, but yeah, anyway. <clears throat> it reduces it's flat damage reduction okay yeah it's, it's flat damage reduction i guess yeah so something like flat Is damage reduction. Oh, yeah. yeah so something like flat damage reduction uh it doesn't show up on your character screen so that's kind of hard to test so that's something that they would probably have to look at uh devotion or it does show up on your character screen so you could probably assume that if your if your armor is decreased then maybe that's the case so yeah um <clears throat> so venaruki you're what are your kind of plans going into classic um well, like as far as like, well, like, what do you want to do? Like, is there something you want to accomplish? Do you want to play with certain people? Like, are you going to make your own guild? Are you going to guild lead? Are you going to join a friend's guild? What, what do you want to do? Uh, so yeah, a lot of people ask me, what am I going to do? Am I quitting live? Am I? What's the plan? Mm -hmm. And so far, I'm just going to do whatever's fun. And so far, classic seems like the option I'm having the most fun with. Um, my plans are to join a guild that my friend's making, Sony Digital. I think the guild is just called classic not right. exactly the most original name but i plan on pretty much doing everything i don't think i'm going to try to do like a rank 14 push or anything like okay. that you think I feel like it's a little bit it's a little bit too much. <laughs> a little bit a little bit too hardcore for me okay. but i i definitely plan on completing all the raids and you know doing lots of world the thing i'm looking forward to the most is getting geared out and doing lots of world pvp like that is a thing that i always enjoyed in the game i'm a little bit interested to see how that's going to work out being a streamer i feel like it might be ex really difficult to not just get griefed all of the time um that, that was one of my concerns as well like originally going into classic is just as a streamer it's so easy because the, the damage is really high um it's if mm -hmm. someone wants to gank you they're going to kill you pretty much um i, I feel like all right you know if two people come out like two rogues there's not really too much you can do if yeah. they're you know competent players so i always thought like if some people did want to just harass me and prevent me from having fun they could be they could do that but i mean yesterday kind of proved that you can get a whole bunch of people together pretty quickly and they can fight on your side as well yeah yeah it's gonna be it, it's gonna be a, a, a bloodbath especially in phase two. <laughs> it's gonna be ridiculous <laughs> yeah particularly in phase two i think it's gonna be pretty wild um <clears throat> So yeah, I think uh, like for us, like we, we've talked about that as well. Like we're our, our current plans are of like I, I'm gonna make my own guild. Stasis is gonna make his own guild, and Tips is gonna make his own guild uh, on on Horde side. He's gonna play Horde, and, and Stacy and I are gonna play Alliance. So we're gonna kind of see like where that goes. Um, there are there are a few more bugs. I know Stacy, if you're trying to do like more of a more of a hardcore thing, I'm more of like a progression style guild. Um, and uh, Tips, you're kind of trying to do more of a hardcore thing too. Um, uh, but yeah, I think it's just going to be interesting to see like what all, what all is going to happen. Um, <clears throat> real quick, uh, there's, there's a few more bugs, right. That people have talked about. And I know one is like the, the strafe bug. And I want to, uh, I want to show that. I want to show that off a little bit in a second. Actually, I'll, I'll like log into the game and I'll explain kind of what I figured out. Um, oh, I, I have to, I have to say really quickly that one of the most disappointing things for me in the entire beta is mm -hmm. that I can't moonwalk anymore. Nice yeah okay <laughs> so let, let's talk about this a little bit i, I know they no, so they got rid of too. yeah they got rid of wall wall jumping right and there's like two types of wall jumping and uh i, I think we talked about in the last class cast uh with like the difference between like wall jumping and stay or er, wall jumping and stay safe wall jumping and, and wedging i just looked at stay safe and triggered my head uh, <laughs> uh yeah the difference between like wedging like wedging in your place into a wall or like being able to actually wall jump up a corner or something so 
you can like wedge your way into certain spots, like getting under Karazhan, getting under Stormwind, uh, some stuff like that still exists, which is cool. Um, but just like how like the world has changed and how they're using basically like they're, they're downpointing the client, like they've gotten rid of moonwalking. I wish that they would add moonwalking in manually, like with some sort of uh, like key combination, right? Like I know one way that I used to do it was uh, I would press like Q and D at the same time and I'd be run like strafe running in a circle. And then if I held D, and then I pressed E right away, I would just flip and I would start moonwalking. So like, well, can you they have... should just add like an in-game shop and then you can buy moonwalking <laughs> for like $100. <laughs> yeah, like $100. Well, it's a, it's a moonwalking subscription Wait, for $100. That's actually a good idea. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'd buy it. I'm not <laughs> okay, I take no. it back. I don't want to give them no, an idea. No, no, so no. Like bad idea. No, <laughs> no, no, yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, one thing, I, I want to go ahead and show this. I mean, I, this is kind of on the same, same uh, topic of moonwalking. Uh, it's not just a strafing bug, but I will show you guys this, and this is from my game. I just I just logged in to show you guys. <clears throat> so, transition. This is something else that I noticed. This is me. This is S fan. Hi. Uh, so, uh, what I've noticed is that whenever you're running around, right? You see how my head is facing forward. This is what people talk about with the strafe bug. Um, this is normal. This is vanilla, right? You jump, you jump, and you turn, and your character's body is static, right? You see that? Look at my hips, my knees, everything's in line. However, whenever I open the attack animation, watch my hips. You see that? It's much more dynamic. My hips are swinging. My character swings across. Oh. Yeah, you Your see that? Your hips don't lie, dude. Your yeah, hips my hips lie. don't lie, dude. So I, I think this is some holdover from BFA. This is also the same thing with strafing. Like, look, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm totally looking the other way. I don't know if this is a, a BFA thing, the strafing thing exactly, but I, it wouldn't have surprised me if... Uh, if they are related, yeah, look at those hips, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically, that's that's something that I notice, and hopefully, this is something they can fix. Uh, it definitely is noticeable, uh, especially for people like me who are constantly like jumping and turning at the same time. Uh, but yeah, uh, I, I, that's that's what I've noticed as well. And we had the chance to, uh, whenever we were in Irvine, we had a chance to actually. I, I brought that up to uh, Brian and Omar whenever. Uh, whenever I was doing my one to 10 run, my video on the one to 10 run. And you can see where I'm at the Morlocks. I start kind of like strafing like an idiot and like jumping around. It's like, dude, isn't this guy trying to like level? What is he like? He's just freaking thumbing his nuts, dude. Like what's he doing? But, uh, but yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Yeah. That's exactly what's happening is, uh, they're, they're sitting there watching. They're like, Oh wow. That's really interesting. So yeah. Um, that's kind of weird that, cause I know you brought that up multiple times. It's kind of weird that they haven't mm -hmm. fixed that, but on the demo, you know, whatever that was six months ago or seven months ago now, Same problem. um, if I was, if I was, no, if, so if I was okay. wanding a monster and the monster moved, my character would move also to keep, to continue wanting. It would auto turn my character or mm -hmm. in vanilla. Wow my character will just start wanting crossbody, you know what I mean? Or wanting that way, right? Without, but I'm still looking this way. Um, so mm -hmm. they fixed that, but they haven't fixed your issue. And it seems sort of like in the same vein, right? Yeah, it does kind of seem the same vein. I, I know one thing that like, it, like time is a resource, right? So uh, they probably want to address as many gameplay things first, like stuff with like, are the talents working right? Is this working right? Is that working right? And then hopefully they go back and they fix that. Because um, it is noticeable, right? I, I know like, I think that's something that I like, even though like, I, I think some people would probably get used to it or some people would probably not even notice. Uh, I do think it's something that's there. Right. And it kind of like, it's, it's just odd to me that it works just fine whenever you're not attacking, but whenever you trigger your attack animation is, is what happens. So. Yeah. It seems a lot of people yeah. are saying who cares, but I feel like that's part of the charm of the game is yeah, it's, all of those little things. Well, yeah. It just, yeah. It, it's supposed, it's supposed to look like janky and blocky. You know what I mean? Like where you're yeah. static, like, that's awesome. like, like it's not like, it's not supposed to be as much like dynamic and, yeah, and that's the thing. Like, it's kind of it's, it's, it's kind of like, whatever for a lot of people, but for other people, like, it's like, yeah. I mean, like, if they can fix it, then just fix it, right? And for me, it's mm -hmm. like, hey, if you if you have a hundred little things that are different, um, that's that adds up to a big thing, you know. A mm -hmm. hundred times a hundred is a million, so that's a big that's a big number, and uh, you don't want that. So everything mm -hmm. should be they should, they should they should try at least at some point to get this stuff working out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, guys, by the way, pretty soon uh, what we're going to do is uh, we, we will be doing a QA and a and stuff at, at the end of Classic Cast. Uh, we'll do that through Twitter. So I want to go ahead and tell you guys so you can go start if, if you want to start tweeting at us with hashtag Classic Cast. That's usually what I look up. I look up hashtag Classic Cast. Um, <laughs> yeah. So um, if you guys want to go ahead and send that to us, we'll uh, we'll start doing that. And if you haven't already, please go follow Ven Rookie. Stay safe and tips. Uh, all their things are on the uh, – uh, on the screen as well. Their handles are on the screen. So you guys can uh, definitely do that as well. So we're, we're planning on doing Classicast 
uh, every week now. So we're, we're kind of moving to a, to a more weekly schedule and doing a lot more stuff with that. Um, <clears throat> so uh, just to kind of continue, um, what's probably been the best moment of the beta so far for you, Venergy? For me, the best yeah. moment? I mean... I I'm, I'm gonna throwing you a softball. Obvious, I'm going to throw you a softball. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the best moment of the beta so far has been, yeah. you know, a 60 versus 60 or 60 versus 80, whatever the hell it was. Yeah. A whole bunch of Alliance versus a whole bunch of Horde just battling in Arathi Highlands Yeah, with, like, generals on either side to try to target and take down. Like, I, I don't know. I, that was just, like, classic WoW in a nutshell. Yeah. I... People have people ask me like why why don't people do that on BFA like what's the difference? Uh, I remember trying to do that on BFA and the server's just like completely lagging out. I was like you know what? we are going to do some world PvP. We're going to get together. We're going to go uh, raid the Alliance capital city and everyone's just porting in and out and the servers lag out and I was, it was really sad. But mm -hmm. yesterday I was really surprised to see at how s I didn't feel any server lag. I don't know about you, but it felt incredibly smooth and maybe yeah. that's because there's not too many people on the servers but i didn't experience any frame rate issues any lag it was just awesome like just it was it was a really yeah. good moment there i were, think that was probably my favorite moment of the whole beta yeah there was like a couple things where like it kind of like it kind of hiccuped here and there but what we had like probably over 200 people there at that point like yeah i, I don't know it, it was it wasn't one of those things that was like uh it, it wasn't one of those things that was like a real issue to me um i think that uh yesterday the best moment for me yesterday was a lot of fun. Uh, we had like the first fight where you guys came in and, and it's so funny. Cause like, I, I literally like said like, okay, so this is how they're probably going to want to initiate. Like a mage will come in and they'll frost Nova cone of cold, <laughs> cold snap of a cone of cold. And then probably ice block until the rest of the team comes in. They'll probably blow us up. And I literally look at chat and it's like, Oh, Pepega S fan, like 1300 strats. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, like, sure. Mm. Use your retail analogy to like what I'm talking about. Vanilla 1300 rating is what they're talking about. And then what do you know? <laughs> Somebody sends me the Van Rookie clip. Van Rookie comes in from the side. What we had planned. I don't know if you even know this, Vin. So we had a second raid, like a smaller group, which is my raid uh, at that wall. Cause I was watching for like, okay, there's a, there's another break in this wall and they can at least alert us to come in, uh, which mm -hmm. they did. But the problem was, is everybody else in the raid was just kind of like standing right here. And I it was like, <laughs> spread out, spread out. Nobody's spreading out. So what happens is Van Rookie comes in off the side, comes in frost Nova, Kona cold, cold snap, Kona cold ice block. Literally exactly like what I was saying is, is like how you would initiate as a mage. And just that initiation is so powerful. Like one, you guys had like a, a lot of mages and, and obviously like very good mages, but coming in with like a strong initiation like that on a group that's just clumped up like this, it's just like easy. Like it's, it's ridiculous. But uh, something else that I've noticed, uh, we're seeing a meta in the classic beta that <laughs> like nobody has ever really seen or even thought of before. It's 1.12 patch, 1.12 talents, 1.12 items, all that stuff with a level 30 cap. And people are essentially tweaking out, twink, not tweaking, twinking out at level 30, uh, very similar to the original release of Battlegrounds, whenever Battlegrounds had like a, you know, 20, 30, so on level cap. Um, but yeah, so, so a lot of people are twinking at 30 and you're seeing things like Whirlwind Axe Warriors are just a nightmare. So yeah. like we came in and it was like, uh, we had like Gil Nash and, and Monkey News and what happens is they, they join the raid like after that initial fight. And what we do is I'm like, okay, I'm going to freedom those guys and heal them. Like, I don't, I don't give a crap. Like these guys are loaded. Like you got no warriors like running around with whirlwind axes. That's scary. So like we started doing that. And then that's whenever like it got really fun for me, actually, whenever I was like running around and, and supporting those guys. So it's just cool to see like there's actually a meta developing out of this weird like beta rule set, which is just mm -hmm. like, I don't know. I, yeah. I think it's totally, totally hilarious to me. What, uh, what weird things have you guys noticed? Like in terms um, of in terms of just specifically being at level thirty. Well, just the toolkits for each class are so different. Like, mm -hmm. for example, warriors we don't have any instant attack ability at level thirty for the most part. Um, like, there's no whirlwind. You'd get that mm -hmm. at thirty six. There's no mortal strike. You get that at forty. Bloodthirst. You'd get that at forty if you talent into it. Right. So it's like. And hamstring. You have, you have hamstring, but hamstring. It, it's not like a damage. It's not a. You don't focus that as like a big damage ability. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Like. Uh, <laughs> So, so basically like just, you know, being limited in how you play, but at the same time, other classes being limited in how they play. Mm -hmm. So it's just, and again, you mentioned whirlwind axe, like it's not just the abilities. There's like each class has its own, you know, specific milestone at certain levels. 
you have access to certain milestones other classes don't they have their own milestones so it, it literally feels like a new meta it, it almost feels like you're playing like a completely different pvp game yeah yeah ab absolutely i'll tell you like uh you mentioned uh gnomes no gnome warriors with orland axe i'd tell you gnome is going to be really good in whatever dual tournaments come up i think that uh because gnomes have plus 15 racial engineering they can actually get engineering beyond what you can normally in the demo and they'll, they'll be able to make uh, net trinkets which no one else is going to have so gnomes are going to have that advantage if they max out their engineering um okay. everyone's going to be everyone's going to be getting gnomed in these dual tournaments yeah, I think, I think, I think, yeah. so you know I, I've, been, I've been dueling and doing world pvp as well i think warlocks are looking really good um i think druids fear. are going to be strong fear is yeah. really good yeah fear there's no fear like uh obviously no pvp trinkets warriors don't get berserker rage till 32. Oh, so dude, it's like, so funny seeing all the warriors get feared. <laughs> oh my god, it's, it's ridiculous. So like, yeah, unless you spec into death, uh, uh, death wish, which most people probably won't do for a dueling tournament, it's uh, it's pretty crazy. That's just, mm -hmm. again, kids are so different. Yeah, uh, and it's a it's a lot different too than the twenty nine meta because you get new abilities and mm -hmm. that could change your build. You also get the um, the new talent, which is really really cool. But like, I think ice block becomes available for mage when you wouldn't normally have it. Mm -hmm. um, at 29 versus 30 so it's actually a lot different than anyone's experienced even on like that private service right yeah so something that's interesting about the gnome net uh, i think it, it's worth mentioning is uh the level requirement the engineering level requirement to use it is 210 so if you have somebody else make it it is a boe so you can actually have somebody uh you can have have a gnome or you can have somebody else make it for you and then trade it to you at 210 engineering and you can still use it so that's going to be hey, interesting. gnomes. So, keep them hey. for ourselves. Don't sell them. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, keep, keep them. Keep them for the gnome. The gnome. The gnomes are going to be acting like goblins if uh, if they're going to be making cash off those things. It's going to be kind of wild. So yeah, something interesting uh, to talk about. Like if people are doing like tournaments and dueling and stuff like that. So yeah, hey, gnome engineers, hit me up because I'm going to need some help. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> real quick, guys. Um, we will be going into a Q and A here uh, very soon. Again, you guys can tweet at us on Twitter. Uh, go ahead and check that out. Like our, our Twitter handles are up there. Use hashtag classicast. That's what I'm going to be looking up. Uh, something that I want to go ahead and show you guys is we did just roll out. We did just roll out classicast merch. So let me go ahead and load this guy up. Pog, you. We rolled this out last week. Um, click, 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 click. Where are we at? Yes. So this is classicast t-shirts so if you guys are interested in classic a lot of people have been asking about this for a really long time uh we finally have them after like almost a year and a half of doing the podcast we're finally doing merch uh so yeah we have white shirts black shirts gray shirts and of course uh horde shirts and alliance shirts uh so if you guys want to do that uh that link is right here i'm going to go ahead and post that in the channel or so yeah, uh, you guys don't click links. Yeah, me neither. So for those of you guys who are interested, uh, you guys can go ahead and do that. So <clears throat> we do have some classic cast shirts as well. Um, but yeah, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and transition back. Nice. So very good. We're going to go to Twitter and we're going to start looking at some stuff. Is there anything you guys want to touch on before we go to Q&A? Um, one thing, uh, you asked me like my favorite moment of playing and the beta and yeah. you know obviously that big war was cool yesterday but <clears throat> i think it's all the little things that are like all the little things are starting to add up like all the little nuance in the game like something i learned today is mm -hmm. um i got a dagger and i i had no dagger skill whatsoever and i had to level up my dagger and be like oh right. just stack your intellect gear it helps you uh you know develop your skills faster i was like oh okay so i buff ai and i put on all my max intellect gear and I level my skill up faster and I think it's just little things like that that you can do in the game that make it so fun and it feels like there's always something you can constantly learn um, another example is like really playing I, I totally forgot you had to play around your mana so much so like I think on my mage I have like 10 rank one spells found yeah. right now <laughs> rank one frost armor rank one arcane intellect and it's like I can put up these buffs to trick people into purging me and they'll go out of mana faster than I do and it's like Little, just little details like that that seem so simple, you learn and it feels really satisfying to actually implement it and have that knowledge over another player. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think I think that's a really really good point. Like wh one of the biggest points of skill, um, I, I think one of the biggest things that the kind of like show off your skill in in vanilla WoW is it's more about knowledge and preparation 
uh, more so than it is like the physical skill, like the retail game, uh, particularly arenas. I think like you got to have like, I mean, I think faster reaction times and stuff are always better, but I think there's a higher skill cap whenever it comes to physical ability in retail WoW uh, as opposed to, uh, or like the modern game as opposed to the classic game, I guess is what we should start saying, right? Because it's all retail now. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, any, anything else before we, uh, before we start moving on? Let's do Q and A. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Yeah. Uh, so, um, this is one from Device. What are your all? What all? What are you all's thoughts on the level five cap for the stress test? Uh, I'll go ahead and start. I think that a level five cap for the stress test is fine. I think doing a level ten cap would have been would have been better because that way you could do the entire zone level five. And, and you know, speaking from a human perspective, that's that's basically Northshire Abbey. And really, for most everybody, it's like that's. It's Northshire Abbey. That's like just the starting area typically or maybe just going out of it and into like Karanos if you're a dwarf or a gnome or something. Uh, I, I think they should have gone a little bit higher, but I think going to five I think is going to work just fine uh, for what they're going to want to accomplish, right? Because it's not – the stress test isn't about like how high of a level you can get. It's about the choke points, right? The biggest choke point that they're going to have is log in. You log in and everybody's trying to do the first quests. That's the biggest choke point. So at, at that point, the farther along that they take the test, uh, the more the choke points are spread out. I think that they could have gone to 10 and it would have been fine. But uh, what, yeah. what do you guys think? How long is well, the stress I'm... test going to be? Two hours. Two hours. If, if it's going to be two hours and if the system is functioning the way it did, you know, on, on day one of beta, I'd be surprised if anyone gets to level five. Um, unless they do like exploration route or something like that. If it's really going to be like a thousand people in each starting zone and five minute, you know, five minute respawn timers. Well, the thing I mean, is that, but there's, there's like the layering now, right? So like, well, we'll even take into account the layering. Isn't the layering well, supposed to be a full realm population size? Yeah. Full oh, realm it's population two days, size. not two hours. It's two days. It, well, it's, oh, it's two days. I think, I oh, think, it, no, 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 no. I think it's going to be open. Let, let's go ahead and reread this actually. So we can go ahead and make sure we get uh, a little bit of clarification. Um, Let's see. Let's go ahead and reopen this so we can get clarification. I'm pretty sure it's two hours. Yeah. yeah. So so the actual test is two days, but refresh. But um, I think they're they're doing like a main stress test. Let's see. It's gonna be from Wednesday, May 22nd, from 4 to 6 p.m. PDT. So it's gonna be two two hours for like the main part of it. Uh, where the closed beta test realm is going to be unavailable. And then I think they're going to open the test, like the, the normal beta realm up after that. So basically they're going to force everybody who's who's in the beta to play on the stress test realm is their point for two hours. But then they're going to have the stress test realm open for uh, for two days. Okay. Yeah, because they said, they did say uh, it's going to be open until Thursday, May 23rd, becoming unavailable at 6 p.m. PDT. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like like two hours, like again, based on what we saw on day one of the beta, um, mm -hmm. even having like five to ten other people in like a questing area was like it, it forced you to wait around for mob spawns. If we're going to have potentially, especially in the human starting zone, the or control starting zone in particular, undead mm -hmm. starting zone, if we're going to have, you know, potentially 500 to 1,000 people in each of the starting zones, I'd be very surprised if anyone gets to level five. Right. One thing that I really want to test is if you can invite people from a different layer and at the frequent, like how often you can hop layers. And I think like the whole layer aspect is going to be the number one thing that I'm going to be interested in test. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, yeah I think I think they want to see how layering is going to, going to shake out because that's one thing we haven't seen yet. We haven't really seen layering in effect or, you know, there just hasn't been enough people playing in order for layering to take place. Right. Um, so, yeah, with with, with the layering, there's. Uh, I think it is going to change things because if you're on whatever layer, the idea is, is that they have the normal respawn times, normal everything, but because your layer is like the normal realm population size that it was in vanilla WoW, that it's going to be fine, right? It's just that there's going to be multiple layers going on at the same time where it's like almost like it's like a, it's almost like a server cluster, except you're not in a cluster of servers. You're on one server on different layers. So you're basically just breaking it down a little bit more. Um, is it, is it going to do, do they prioritize layers for like people in the same guild and stuff like that? Because it would be weird to not have your like you're in a guild and people are in different layers in a specific zone and you don't even see your guildies running around. I feel like that's a cause for concern. Right. They did so say when we were down in it. California, um, 
we we were having like a dinner with Ines Kostas and Omar, and I actually brought that up. I was like, could you do this? Could you, you know, give preference, you know, give preference to guildies on the same layer? And they were like, uh, yeah, we could probably do that. But it didn't sound like it's something that they had thought about, but maybe they'll. I hope they do that because I feel like that's just going to develop. I, I don't know exactly how layering works, but it seems like there could be some of the same issues that arise, especially if you can like layer hop, like have people yeah. invite you into their specific layer and you know, get away from people that are griefing you. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, so, I had a layering issue um, where in, in the Barons I was doing this quest. Uh, I don't think it's Virag the Dervish. It's the other. It's the other centaur that you have to kill in the tent or whatever. And he spawned, and then I got layered off, and like just disappeared. So um, you know, you definitely see some of that sharding mechanism there, but uh, but it's you know it's a lot less common. But is it less common because there's not any people online? I'm not sure, but it's definitely kind of still there. Hmm. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. It's like it's like being able to differentiate between. Uh... So I, I was watching. I was actually I, I was actually watching Yithisins, right? I was watching Sakar on Twitch, who who is Yithisins. He's no longer at Blizzard, unfortunately. And uh, Brian Birmingham was in his chat watching watching him. And uh, like I said, it was just him. It wasn't like a fake account or whatever. It was actually him. Uh, and people like he was just answering questions from people like Q and A and stuff. And one of the things he he uh, noted, or one of the things that he he said, was that one of the interesting things about the beta is like people see something and then uh, they don't know if it's like they're not quite able to differentiate between it being simply a bug or if it's like a feature, mm -hmm. right? Like something like you said, like for you, it seemed like layering or sharding or whatever, yeah. but, uh, it, it may not have been, been, it may not have been. Yeah. It might've right. been a bug. I don't know, but yeah. Right. Exactly. Um, that's, uh, I, I think it's important to be able to differentiate between, uh, between those things. So, uh, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and, uh, add to this. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, <clears throat> What do you think the impact classic will have on BFA and retail? This is from Movitz. What do you guys think? Uh, I, I can start with this one. Yeah. So I don't know. I, after playing uh, the game and seeing how excited people are, I don't know if they're ready for... I'm actually genuinely worried that they're not going to be ready for how many people I think are going to be interested in playing and trying it out because mm -hmm. I think... In my personal opinion, live is probably going to be a ghost town for a little while. Ooh, yeah. Like, yeah, I think uh, I, I can kind of see it the same way. Now, I, I didn't quite think that, like, it would put such a big dent in retail initially. Um, but I just think the the current, like, I guess, like, public perception, the, re the, the reception of BFA has been very, very, like, poor. Um, like, sure, they have, like, a new patch coming out with 8.2 and this and that. So, like, who knows how that's going to go. But uh, I do think with – I mean, you can just see it by from viewer numbers. Not everybody watches Twitch. I mean, believe it or not, guys, not everybody watches Twitch. Not everybody is into, like, the whole content creation scene or whatever. Not everyone's into YouTube. Uh, but I do think that it's a fair – uh, it's a fair indicator of how much hype and excitement there is for retail. I know, I know, guys. Believe it or not, <laughs> but uh, it, I think it's what? a fair, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a fair indicator of uh, how much hype and excitement there is behind Classic. I mean, like Asmin Stream, there was there was like over a hundred k views at one point. We're doing dead mines. You're doing a level nineteen well, dungeon from fifteen years ago, and you have a hundred k views, like. That's unbelievable, you know. So, so let me ask you this: How true of a representation do you think it'll be? So, let's say there are on any on a given day there are ten times as many people watching classic West streamers as there are watching BFA streamers. Random example: Do you think that that's really indicative that there are ten times more people playing classic WoW than retail WoW? Do you think it's going to be a pretty good ratio? That's a lot. That's a lot of people. I I don't know. Well, I... uh, not not sorry. Let me rephrase: Not that exact ratio, but do you think that's indicative oh. of the actual player base? That's what I mean. Right. Okay. I see what you're saying. Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, is there some, like, is there a positive correlation between the two? There's probably a positive correlation between the two. Uh, is it like an exact correlation of like, you know, like a one-to-one -one correlation between the two things? Probably not. But I, I do think that there's probably a, a positive correlation between the two. Well, I so. mean, I, yeah. I don't know if it's going to be exactly because yeah. some of the top streamers, they could, you know, stream anything and they're going to, you know, retain a lot of that viewership. So mm -hmm. whatever they're doing, if it is in favor of classic, wow, that's obviously going to skew the numbers a little bit. But I know for myself, just the thing that like makes me think classic, wow, is just going to be completely ridiculous is I've had so many of like my old friends that I used to game classic, wow, with like, 10, you know, way, you know, way back when uh, the game was out, 
that I haven't spoken to in a really long time, like names that I haven't heard in you know, five, six, seven years. I was in a coffee shop wearing an Alliance shirt. And yeah. the guy was like, oh, I really like your shirt. And I was like, oh, cool. Like, do you still play? He's like, no, but I'm coming back for a classic. I was like, nice. all right. Nice. So it's just like all these examples I, I'm seeing of how excited people are uh, just like in my everyday yeah. life and like my old friends. Uh, it's really, it's been unbelievable. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's like running into somebody in Ironforge in real life. <laughs> like, hey, yeah. Yeah, just like your video, dude. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, the same idea, yeah. I was going to say, like, to add on to that thought, a couple times over the last month or so, I've looked at, uh, if you look on the Old School RuneScape website and the RuneScape 3 website, it, it's, it tells you actually how many people are logged in and playing. And, um, like, that ratio is the same as Old School RuneScape viewers on Twitch, always, pretty much always. Really? To RuneScape 3 viewers. Like, the ratios are always the same. That's interesting. Um, so I, I, I think that Twitch actually might be a very good indication of how many people are actually playing these uh, different mm -hmm. versions of games. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I think the big thing like that surprised me the most is uh, is how excited like like Venruki you are and like after watching your video and stuff, and a lot of other people like Muscle Bra TV, um, I think even Talia and Nevi Tall made a video about it, although I haven't seen it. But seeing people that a few months back were, were kind of skeptical or, or weren't really sure about Classic, like tally even like a lot of people are like really embracing it now. Like once you get your hands on it, it it's you, you see it. You yeah. play it and it's just it sucks you right in like it's just fun like you just yeah. play and you have the most fun like i stream and i look over and nine hours have gone by and i'm just like wh what happened yeah. to the whole day like no. i literally i literally have to force myself i'm like okay this is you know i used to play a lot of classic wow and i feel like it wasn't necessarily the healthiest thing to sit and play 12 hours every day so i'm like i have to force myself i want to like go for a walk i want to see the sun today you know, so <laughs> i have to force myself to stop playing because i just am having there's no moment in the game where i'm like man this is boring i'm just every i'm just always engaged i'm always having fun and I, that's what i'm most excited about i'm just excited for as someone who's streamed wow full time for six and a half years it's pretty remarkable to see how many people are just excited about playing the game i love i don't care what version it is like right. just having everybody playing and being excited and coming back is just amazing yeah and i think uh i, I think and here's something that I think a lot of people hope. There's a lot of people who like they they want to set up this like false like narrative of some false narrative of like oh this guy versus that guy right retail versus classic and uh, how you know these players hate those players or whatever. And and I don't think that's true. I mean sure there's going to be like a, a vocal minority of people who are like spurging out about that kind of stuff. But like the the fact of the matter is this is if one version of the game is good and it's popular and people are playing it then people are going it's going to be better for the other version of the game as well uh, especially mm -hmm. now that they're on a shared sub and all this stuff people might like start playing this and like oh hey i'll check this out i'll check this out um i think that'll be cool and i think that's one of the things that a lot of people do hope for from classic is i think that you have two separate games for two separate markets of people but despite the fact that you have this already um there's there is some overlap there and you can draw some things draw some imp inspiration as far as like uh design decisions go uh, just just general game design philosophy from classic and be able to implement that back into retail wow and be like you know what why do people like vanilla so much like this is 15 years old you know there's obviously something and uh, i think like you said it's it's not necessarily a nostalgia thing like you logged in and you're like dude this game is designed well right like yeah, you started playing and, and that's that's how i feel that's how a lot of people feel right and maybe maybe it starts with nostalgia but it definitely doesn't end with it and, and i think mm -hmm. that's the important thing so yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. I I'm going to go on to the next question. Um, this is a good one, actually, because I think uh, I think a lot of people uh, might be interested in this. What's your opinion on websites like Raidbots having stat weight simulations for Classic? Um, <clears throat> so when it comes to like stat weight simulations and all, all this stuff that like Retail WoW has, it doesn't quite work the same way because every item... I mean, there's like randomly generated green items like of the eagle, this and that. But like whenever you play at max level and like when you're talking about rating, every item is individually made, right? Every item is individually made. It's it's designed a certain way or, or the overwhelming majority of them, I'll say, unless it's like an of the eagle item or whatever. Um, they're made individually with certain design in mind, right? It's It, it has like a, a hidden item level, right? Which item level doesn't really mean anything like most it does mean something but most people don't use item level as a me as a measure uh of power for an item 
what item level is. It's strictly a variable that gets plugged into a formula. It's like item level, uh, the, 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 Rarity of the item gets plugged into a formula to give you how many itemization points there are, and those itemization points are manually distributed for each item. So you'll have items in uh, freaking BRD that are as good as like raid items. You'll have items in Dire Mall. You'll have items in uh, Molten Core that you're still going to be using going into Nax. Like this game is designed in a way to where you can throw stat weights out and okay, great. Like big surprise. Like strength is really valuable for warriors. You know what I mean? Um, but it's, it's not, uh, it's not going to be something that you can really plan out like that. Like it comes down more to best in slot lists and combinations of gear, right? Like this combination of gear is really good because it gives me this amount of stats or whatever. And, uh, that kind of stuff is different than like figuring out stat weights, you know? Yeah. A lot of gear in classical WoW is very, very, very situational, right? Like for example, on a, shorter fight you might have pieces of gear that have higher spell power but uh you lose intellect and so you equip those just because you know that you won't have to life tap to get you know, before the boss dies but on a longer fight it might make sense to drop a little bit of spell power and gain you know enough intellect for two more shadow bolts um which will get you through the fight if, if that makes sense uh so you lose out on a little bit of spell power but you make up for it by not having to life tap because you get two two shadow bolts from the intellect so situations like that with tr there's a lot of trinkets and on use stuff that also like ties into this um it's all so situational just depending on what you're doing that it would it'd right. be very hard to have a clear dry cut answer with stat weights and websites like that i think mm -hmm. yeah you it's know. it's uh like just just giving you that it's not gonna be like <sighs> sure like it, it'll do something but like it's not i, I don't think it's going to change like the it, it might change the information that you have available but i don't think it actually changes like the the like method of how you do things because like the items are there like the items are the items right uh, like if anything, it would be like a character planner would be like the only thing where you could just put put items on and oh, okay, like instead of actually having to put them on in game and get out pen and paper and, and do stuff like you might do normally. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I would say there. Um, <clears throat> hmm. Uh, this uh, uh, that one actually kind of goes along with uh, with the last question. Actually, I, we'll go ahead and talk about it. How much do you guys think the classic hype has been increased because of how bad BFA is doing? Uh, at least how seemingly bad. Like we, we can go ahead and like continue talking about that. Um, actually, and and I think this is a good question for you, Ven. Like, do you feel like, do you feel like it? It's made a big impact for you. Like people are looking for something else because, uh, I guess BFA just hasn't hasn't had that good of a reception. I I, I would have to say like I, I don't I don't like to sit here and like bash, bash. on the game. No, I, and I agree actually. Uh, yeah, I don't like to bash on BFA, but I mean. I've noticed it in my own stream where people who have watched me for years are no longer playing and they're telling me stuff like, Hey man, you know, I don't play wow anymore, but I still support the stream and right. that, you know, I put on a brave face, but that actually makes me heartbroken. You know what I mean? It's hard yeah. for me to like find groups of people to run dungeons with or to, you know, get in my rated battlegrounds. So it's like, Hey guys, do you want to do a BG? Nobody wants to play, you know? And mm -hmm. it, it, it was very, it was, it was kind of difficult over the last three months and I don't know. I think just the way it is right now where, you know, a content patch drops, you know, people are excited. And then, you know, three, four weeks later, it kind of gets boring. It's just the same thing. It's just like, it feels like every single content patch is just, you're just on a, you know, a little treadmill and you eventually get to the point where you have good gear. And then the next patch, your gear is going to suck and you have to do it all over again to unlock the Azurite traits you already had. And uh, it's just, yeah. I, so I feel like a lot of people are excited to play classic WoW. Because, yeah, I mean, BFA just isn't as good as it probably could be. Mm -hmm. That's not as good as, like, you had hoped for it to be, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is, a, this is a good question. I think uh, – I, I actually want to touch on this because I think this is a really good point. And uh, you, you particularly see this in a lot of, like, YouTube content. But, uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and touch on this. Uh, obviously, you guys have a lot of experience in vanilla, but how do we know for sure that the details you remember are from official and not just the many private servers that may or may not actually be accurate? I completely agree, Mantako. I completely agree. Uh, I, I think this is one of the big problems. Like you'll see a lot of like guide videos and stuff like that where like people are talking about uh, – like they'll be talking about whatever, right? But they're using like a something that they, they figured out on a private server and then like it's if it's like presented as like, okay, this is how it's going to be in classic. The reality of it is like we don't really know. We don't really know a lot of that stuff and uh, I think that uh, that's the most exciting thing about classic and the classic beta is that we're going to have the opportunity to find out for sure. Um I think that, uh, you know, you can have a hunch and, and this is why, like, uh, I feel like 
I started, I, I'm not a long time private server player specifically. Like I started playing again in like 2017 and after like, at, I started playing after I heard about NOST, like the NOST shut down. And then basically up until like, I, I got a little bit after I got banned, uh, I was like actively playing, but, um, but yeah, I think like one of the things was for me is that I came in and I picked it up quickly is because I remembered a lot from, from retail, uh, retail vanilla. So I, I do think that uh, I do think that it's certainly a thing, and I do think that you're a hundred percent right in saying that we don't know a lot of things. Like it just as as a group, as a community, like we don't a hundred percent know for sure a lot of things, uh, or not, I should say, they don't know everything. Uh, and that's what's going to be really exciting about classic this beta everything else about it is because people are constantly going to be finding out new things like people are looking up bis lists and stuff like that and like like bis lists you should do this strategy this is how you should rage do this thing like consumables this and that the reality of it is, is a lot of that could change a lot, like i would say almost everything is subject to change and everybody should be prepared for that. And I think that's going to be really, really exciting about classic and this whole, we already know everything, uh, mentality. I, I don't really think it's valid and I think it's good that it's not hundred percent valid. So yeah. Yeah. And like vanilla itself wasn't even a monolith. It's not like, you know, private servers, obviously they're different than vanilla, but vanilla was different from vanilla. Mm -hmm. Patch 112 was very different than patch 1.1. So many things changed, challenge changed, mob values changed, things that we can see in the patch notes and things that weren't ever presented in the patch notes. And on top of that, Classic itself is not a full exact recreation of patch 112 because we're getting content released at different intervals. You know, there's a lot of small little, you know, bits and pieces, Franken patch from other patches. So yeah, the, the meta is just so different just because like, it's taking a very specific portion of vanilla and then, you know, retrofitting it with other sections of the game. So no, I completely agree. Like it's, it's just so different. Like it's going to have its own meta in a lot of different ways. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this, like there's this idea that every guild is going to go into molten core and one shot every boss and have everything on farm from week one. And that's absolutely wrong. Of course, very, very good guilds, like above average guilds, molten core is not going to be the most difficult raid. And of course, raids get progressively harder as time goes on. DWL is harder than molten core and et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you will have guilds, maybe half, maybe half of the guilds going into Molten Core are going to have to progress on Gar. Like they're going, like yeah. they're going to wipe on Ragnaros. They're going to progress on Ragnaros. You're going to have a lot of progression guilds. Um, it, it, not every boss is just going to be a one shot. Yeah, that's one thing I've, I've been very like, look, I, my, my guild is it's going to be a progression style of guild. I do not like talking like. I'm gonna walk in there day one. We're gonna clear everything. <laughs> like I, like I'm not like like I, I'm a very like. Mm. Some guilds are like that. Like I know like like stay safe skill is is gonna be like like you're you're planning on doing like you guys are already having guild meetings and stuff like that. Like you're you're wanting to play like, min max hard, right? My guild is not gonna be that. And I know it's like a progression style of guild. It might take us like a couple of weeks or whatever. If we can get everything down first week. That'd be awesome. But if it takes us a couple of weeks, whatever that's fine. You know, like there's going to be things that we expect because like, okay, I played on a private server and this boss did this. And then, you know, there's, there's mechanics that people just have, have kind of like, okay, we watched this video and we think the boss works this way. Like you take a uh, Nixia deep breath, for example, uh, where it's actually like people, like people don't know how deep breath works. Like what triggers the, uh, what triggers like the, 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 what triggers the deep breath, excuse me. Like, so it's like, don't stand too close to each other. Don't do this. Don't do that. Like, People don't know and private servers don't know. So it's the, everybody has tried like some weird kind of crazy formula for how, how does this happen? Uh, but even something like that, that's kind of like a running thing. Um, even like nano, the, the lead of quality assurance on, on Nostalrius brought that up. Like they actually went and visited blizzard and talked to them about it. And, and uh, at the time blizzard blizzard wouldn't tell them because it was, it was actually like, I think it's kind of funny that they didn't tell them because it's like, Hey, <laughs> you know, like we'll, we'll see whenever, you know, We'll see someday, maybe, and I guess eventually. Now it's like they knew the classics coming out and all that. Um, so yeah, um, <clears throat> let me let me go ahead and uh, go on to the next question here. Um, oh, where are the huge piles of skeletons after PvP events? This is good. I I really hope they fix this. Um, I'm really True. missing them. Yep. Probably those make the most authentic vanilla experience. So I guess at some point in in the modern game they made it to where like it, it dynamically like gets rid of skeletons if, if people die out in the world so that the world doesn't get too cluttered up in vanilla like bodies everywhere just littered if there was a big pvp battle 
Like I remember, I, <laughs> I remember walking into Black Rock Mountain and just seeing like skeletons everywhere, and I was like, oh. <laughs> Must have been a raid that just went by here, like like two raids just fighting each other or something, and that's cool. Like it is badass. It makes the it. world alive. So like you you walk in there and you know like look I wasn't there but I know some like, I know something just went down. Like it's I I think it's so cool. Uh and, and I really I really really hope uh that they do fix that as well. Um have you guys have you have you had you guys noticed the kind of the same kind of thing? I know I know whenever we were doing the PvP yesterday, like. Arathi Islands looked like a janitor went through between every match and just kind of yeah. sweeping everything up. Like, I actually yeah. kind of forgot yeah. about that. It was like it was like a basketball game. Like they're just going and sweeping up off the sweat and then heading back to the bench. Like I, I was really surprised. Yeah, bones just disappearing left, right, and center. Yeah. But yeah, I actually completely forgot that that used to be in the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I wonder if they've intentionally gotten rid of it or just forgot about it or what. I wonder if it was an intentional design for Classic Beta to not have them there. I wonder if it interferes with like server stability or what the deal is, but. If, if it's doable, I think it's a really badass feature. I, I love I love that stuff. Because yeah. you're right, after a giant PvP battle, it looks like it snowed. Like, there's just, like, the ground is just white. <laughs> it's just people's bones. skeleton. Yeah, for real. Death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah. Um, oh, this is a good one. I really hope, I really hope they do this. Uh, do you think once all the fades... Oh, wait. Oh, no, I misunderstood this question. Well, I'm going to ask my own question. Um, <laughs> do you guys think Do you guys think that they should add uh, battlegrounds into beta testing and test features from the other phases? Uh, yes. I think I think that would be really, really cool if they added battlegrounds in at some point in phasing or sorry, at some point in testing uh, in order to be able to test like Warsaw Gulch and Arathi Basin. And uh, maybe even AV, but I mean, you, you wouldn't have maybe low level AV. Now you can really, you know, you just scale everything down. I don't know. It'd be interesting. Uh, yeah. And just, you know, for strictly well, for testing purposes, not because it would be incredibly fun, uh, strictly yeah. for testing, of course. Right. Uh, well, like, sure let, no me, let me ask you this. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is the thing. I, I think it'd be badass. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I'd love to do it. But yeah. what, what is there to test? Like other, other than a couple wall jumps, you know, and like, we'll figure that day. We'll figure that out day one, phase three anyway. What what really do they need us to test in the battle? <laughs> well, I, I think I think to that point though, it's like you could almost say the same thing about like, well, is, didn't they make the game fifteen years ago? You know what I mean? Like, I, I think I think it's it's gonna be very similar. Yeah, like something could respect. come up, I guess. Some weird some weird random thing could come up, right? That like yeah. like I mean, there's there's a number of things, right? That, that we've talked about already that people are just like, oh wow, okay, that's interesting. That's what I think. I, I think like you never know, so you might as well test it. Yeah. So. I'm definitely biased. So. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, I, I want them as well. I really yeah. want them as well. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I think it'll be really really fun. Um. So yeah, let, let's let's go back to to the actual question. But Phoenix Cosplay was asking, uh, do you think that once all the phases finish in Classic, should they create new content at sixty or should they make carry or should they carry over servers into BC and beyond? This is something that we've talked about multiple times. This is a question that comes up pretty often. But I think there is a new audience of people that that is uh, probably new here, uh, people who, who maybe haven't seen Classic Cast before. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. Um, what do you guys What do you guys think? How do you guys feel about that? Uh, like post, I guess post next content. So I've been thinking yeah, about this a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot and what exactly they could do. And it feels like to me, mm -hmm. there's two routes they could go. So you mm -hmm. you play out vanilla completely. It's after Nax, and then. They decide, you know what, that went so well, let's release the Burning Crusade. Now, what do they do? They could either roll over vanilla into Burning Crusade, or they could create a Burning Crusade realm. And maybe you could portal over your, or copy over your vanilla character to the Burning Crusade realm, and then you could experience that way. But I feel like both sides kind of have problems. Like, they roll over the realms to Burning Crusade, then Fourth all of a sudden you can you're going to alienate all the people that just want to play vanilla and yep. they're going to be going back onto the private realms, which would be kind of hilarious. I mean, not for them, but it would just be <laughs> such a weird situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other way where they bring out the burning crusade realm. Now there's vanilla. There's, you know, the, the current realm, whatever it may be, maybe it's BFA still, maybe it's the new expansion. And then you have burning crusade and then you have three realms that people are playing on and it's dividing the community. And then, Maybe that goes on and they do Wrath of the Lich King and they have to do the same thing. I just like don't know where they would draw the line and how many servers they really want to have running at the same time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I think uh, I think Wrath of the Lich King kind of gives like a kind of like an artificial stop point in the sense that you could always say that, oh, this is, you know, after that, the world changed and Azeroth changed a new Azeroth and stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of like you have that little artificial barrier. 
But um, but yeah, I, I definitely think TBC. There, I wouldn't be surprised if they're already working on it right now. Um, when we spoke to John Hyde and Omar Gonzalez, and actually even Ian at the event last week or two weeks ago now, we yeah. asked them straight up, are there plans for TBC and we're at the lifting servers? And they came out and they said, yeah, sure. If you guys want it, uh, that's something <laughs> we're, we're definitely open to doing. And it's a very stark contrast to what they said during BlizzCon. We asked that same question at BlizzCon six months ago. And they said they're not even, you know, we're not looking at that. We're not focused on that. We're just focused on classic. So the fact that they were so willing to come out and say, yeah, sure, it's, it's something we're down to do. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're if they're literally working on it literally right now. Yeah, I, I think well, that that answer uh, probably indicates like how confident they are with classic vanilla, right? Like, OK, they sort of have everything figured out with classic. Things are going very well. OK, now we can sort of devote some brain power to maybe classic TBC and start working on that. You're maybe right. Maybe they're sort of getting that stuff done. And I'm really stupid. I don't know how this stuff works, but it would make sense to me that the infrastructure that they're developing or setting up for classic vanilla, they can probably use for classic TBC down the road, right? So who knows, maybe mm -hmm. just by nature of making classic vanilla, they're already closer to TBC uh, than otherwise. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I think I think Burning Crusade is probably more important than, uh, I think Burning Crusade is probably more important than like post next content. Um, now here's here's the the big issue and, and you kind of brought this up ben is uh force progression right like if you roll the servers into bc and then all of a sudden the people who who wanted to play vanilla the whole time that's all they want to play like now they're like okay what now you know like now what like it's, it's over what do we do so uh like maybe like it, it's it's just that that's probably the biggest problem i would say um historically i should say i mean there's been times where like people have made burning crusade private servers and on Burning Crusade private servers, something that people have seen is that there's a major horde population imbalance, like in favor of horde. There's a major population balance in favor of horde. Um, is the same thing going to happen? Uh, I don't know. I think it's important to have like a, some sort of character. If they did a fresh Burning Crusade server and they added like uh, – like or they, they allowed you to character copy to that. So you could keep – like let's say I'm, I'm an Alliance player and I want to play at level 60. So I – I keep my character and I care I can keep it there on that server, but I can also copy it over and I can play on that burning crusade server and start as I like, as if I were going into burning crusade, uh, while still having my character where it was, where I can play 1.12 or, or phase six vanilla. Wow. Uh, as long as possible, right. Or as just forever, basically. Uh, I think that would be cool. We've mapped this out before and it's like some kind of it ends up being some kind of crazy spider web because whenever they do this, they're gonna inevitably have to make fresh servers. It's gonna be it's gonna be crazy, right? Fresh vanilla servers. Uh Stan said you talked about that uh before. Um but yeah, I, I think it's it's just gonna be very, very interesting to see uh how they do it. I think certainly allowing uh, or like adding Burning Crusade is more important than post Nax content at first. Um they're definitely at first. Uh, but also doing it the right way to where you're not forcing progression and the people who want to play vanilla can't play vanilla. Wait, when you a, say post Nax content, do you mean them bringing, like making new content after Nax? Yeah, like, kind of like the OSRS. Is that something route. people are actually interested in? Yeah, like, like there's, been, there's been a lot of people talking about it because um, I, I think most people probably want Burning Crusade um, just because like, a lot of people really like Burning Crusade, but it is something that people have been talking about. It's something that people want because stuff has been developed since like really the alpha since before um, since before Burning Crusade came out. It was developed in the original development of the game, like Caverns of Time, Black Morass is in the game files. Karazhan is there. You know, they, they made three different versions of Karazhan before we finally saw the, the final version. Right. Or I think they made two versions and the third version was the final one, I think. Uh, the Karazhan Crypts are there. There's so much stuff in the game. Hygel is in the game. The Hygel that is in Cataclysm is the same exact Hygel, uh, as far as landscape goes, that was in the original game. So there's people that have been talking about it, but I think like more than anything, before you do all that and go down that rabbit hole, I think Burning Crusade is the most important thing, and I and I think that uh, you will appeal to the the largest number of people, and then maybe someday in the future you can talk about some sort of classic plus. That is that is what I think personally. So, mm. or all, I should say almost the exact same. I guess as far as I know, it's the exact same. Like from whenever I was running around, you can't actually you can't like I guess uh, through normal means through normal means you can't really get into Hygel and Vanilla, but like it's it's like very very similar, right? At least very very similar. I I couldn't tell the difference. I should say. So yeah.
Yeah, I think... my, my opinion is like, I think that classic TPC is the right move. And of course, Vinaruki raises a good point. You have to continue to offer classic vanilla. Otherwise, we're end up where we are right now. And if you want to play vanilla, you have to play on a private server, right? So if they move on to TPC at the same time, they have to continue to offer classic vanilla. Um, I think a lot of this content, like you said, like High Jaw and the older versions of Karazhan and like there may be an Emerald Dream Raid and stuff like this. I think this stuff wasn't added to vanilla because they decided it wasn't a good fit or it just wasn't, you know, they, they didn't add it for a reason. It's not like they ran out of time. They, they, they could have dr drug vanilla on as long as they wanted. Right. But they chose to go on a TBC. Um, the other thing is like after next Ram is you would end up with big power spike problems. And I think pe things would get really out of hand. People already say that. And I, I agree the best time for PVP in vanilla wow and classic wow is going to be uh bwl or zg because the gear isn't too power spiky you know in in when people are in t3 and even starting with like aq gear people become really glass cannony um people are just dying so fast so the most fun pvp is going to be probably phase three phase four during uh classic wow so i think that if you offer new content in classic wow like bonus content after next ramus mm -hmm. or whatever you have to incentivize it somehow and in mmos you incentivize new content with gear and I think that adding new gear would, one, change the meta a lot, and the game wouldn't really feel the same in a lot of ways. And mm -hmm. there would be huge power spike problems, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the desire for a patch 1.13 mostly stems from the fact that people want more vanilla. Um, there's a lot of people that want Burning Crusade. I want to see Burning Crusade too. But I won't lie, there are a couple of small things about TBC that, you know design philosophies or paradigm shifts that kind of take a little bit away from vanilla or away from from what world of warcraft was back in the day like not as many materials being out in the world stuff like that flying mounts obviously is the big one kind of changing the entire like world pvp landscape and stuff people want uh, there's a there's a big portion of people i should say that want more vanilla beyond what's there in classic and uh unfortunately i just don't think that's the right business choice i think tbc is the slam dunk so blizzard will go with that but you know, it's you know, you always think about the idea of man. I wish there was there was just more vanilla like content, whether it came from World of Warcraft or other games. I just wish there was more of this type of game, possibly a new experience, new game entirely. Um, but I think that's just what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say more so like, uh, you know, you could go for a slam dunk, right? You could go for a slam dunk, but you know, coach is going to tell you go for the layup, right? So you can get the easy points with TBC instead of like trying to show off and do this great big like grandiose like classic plus whatever and then it ends up <laughs> failing right that's that that's that's more so kind of like the, the way that i see it like you could just hey bc is going to be a hit easy layup easy points um yeah I, I think uh i i think that's that's the case for sure um this is something that people keep asking and i, and I think we should address it uh do the people who get accepted oh no no sorry we, we already talked about that, but people have been asking about, do you have to be subscribed to uh, wow right now in order to get beta access? Uh, I don't know because I think you do. they said, yeah. they said, yes, they said you do. That, I think that's what they said. Yeah. But like they said you do, but I've had people whisper me and telling me that they don't have beta. They, they weren't sub. I don't know if they're telling the truth. Or yeah. Not, I don't but... know if they're just lying huh. or what. That's the thing. Yeah. So like they said, yes, but I, I personally, would very strongly not recommend subbing for the sake of just like hoping that you get in the beta. Uh, I mean, look, it's your money. You can do with it what you want. But I, I, I think that like, look, if you want to take the chance, it's like, dude, I will pay $15 for the chance to just play the beta. I think it'd be really fun. If that's how you feel, then, then great. It's your money. But I re like reasonably, I would not recommend it. And, and certainly I feel like if you, if you do that just for just hoping for a chance to get in the beta and you don't get in, like you don't really have a right to be upset about it because like, I don't, I don't know. You should you just have the foresight to know that you're like gambling essentially. So yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I think they shouldn't do it. Like, I think it's pretty obvious why they're requiring the sub. Like it, it's, it's easy money for them. Right. Um, I, man, I, I, I would, if I wasn't in my position now, I would probably do it. But at the same time, I would tell other people not to do it. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like it's, I, I don't know, dude. I don't know, man. It's like a weird thing. Cause you're like, this is so stupid. This is so stupid for me to actually waste money on this. Yeah. Hoping for yeah. it. But then yeah. like, you're just obsessed with the game, I guess maybe. 
Yeah. What, I, what, what if you are that one guy who just wants to play so bad in your sub and you end up getting a key? Yeah, well, then you're exactly. going to feel really good, dude. It's going to be... Like, <laughs> it feels good, but hey, everyone else just feels garbage. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's rolling the dice, dude. That's that big wind fury. That's the big seal command. That's what that is. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. We have we have a little bit more time. We're going to take a few more questions, guys. Um, guys, please, if you haven't already, uh, please, please, please go follow Van Rookie. Stay safe. Uh, follow tips as well. All their handles are on the screen. Um, Stay safe is going to be streaming after this, so uh, we're we're going to be hosting him. Uh, but yes, we do have a uh, we do have a few more questions that we can take. Let's take some questions out of the chat. Actually, if you guys have any questions in the chat that you want to give us, um, <clears throat> we can go and take a look at that as well. Um, what is Van Rookie's thoughts on looking silly in low level gear with no transmog? Uh, like, I'm so happy you picked that up. Okay, so okay. I saw him ask it a few times. I, was, I, I thought maybe you know we'd give him a shot. What do you think, Van Rookie? Uh, can I can I send you photos on Discord? There's something I yeah. really want to show you. Yeah, I'll load them okay, up. Okay, so, right, so I took a screenshot this morning. Of, right. I'll post it right here. I took a screenshot this morning of uh, my character, um, like right before I went live, and that's it. Okay, so. There's a screenshot of my character right before I went live. And this is a screenshot of one of the transmogs that I came up with. So I'm kind of known for wearing really stupid transmogs, <laughs> very colorful, kind of like nothing matches. This this one kind of matches, but they look incredibly similar. And I just thought that was kind of hilarious. But I, I like it. I think transmog, so I feel like a lot of the decisions that they made uh, over the years that eventually got us to where we are in BFA <laughs> had like really good intentions. Yeah. But I think transmog is one of those things I, I thought would be really awesome initially, but I don't actually like it that much. I yeah. kind of, I kind of like, you know, showing off I'm a PVP or look at my PVP gear. And although it ends up, everyone has very similar sets. Like when you see, you know, someone in full PVP gear and maybe they have like one piece of PVE gear, like kind of shows their power level. And uh, I don't know. I, I yeah. like not everyone looking, super duper pretty yeah this is really funny it's just like I, and I, I talked about this on stream a little bit today where uh if you look at characters particularly like in the level 30 range like everybody looks so just janky like they yeah. like it's everybody looks like their armor was just thrown together you know, partially because it was but it, it you literally look like a, a warrior or like some kind of some kind of guy you know you're you're a mage or warrior whatever class you actually are but you're you're somebody training you're growing you're getting stronger you're getting equipment you're farming out in the world and, and you're it's exploring humble. it's it's very humble it's yes humble gameplay that yeah. is a very good way you're, of putting you're not, it you're not the champion of the alliance forces or whatever the global commander of the Argus offensive you're just like a humble yeah. little adventurer helping people like get boar meat for their village or whatever I and like it, it. it feels good yeah man. it's it's cool like. Like it's just like I, I know we looked at our guys in uh, we looked at our guys and we were doing SM graveyard runs like all day on stream and like everybody just stands there and you look like you look like the average Joes in dodgeball and it's like dude they, these are like the people's champions like this I don't know, it's just funny because it's like they're not like globo gym <laughs> it's just cooler like it's just like these are like the common man I I, I love it I, it's it's so cool so yeah yeah and I've it's very endearing. I agree. And like, as kind of like a secondary effect, like I, I've always felt like one of the biggest incentives to progress in any MMORPG is not just like power gains, but also appearance gains. And it's something mm -hmm. that Vanilla WoW did really well, possibly like even unintentionally. Like that moment when you go from wearing like that freaking rinky dink little cloak thing to like a full on like cape. That's like that's like always kind of like a big little like power moment there where oh my god I got this like visual upgrade I, I look more powerful now, um, and it goes beyond that like generally speaking on average the lower level pieces, especially like the cloth shoulders the low level cloth shoulders, they're literally like little triangles <laughs> on, on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, well, but as you go on like you you go deeper into the game like you know warlocks you know you start getting your tier sets and stuff like that or whatever pieces you use mages same thing like you know the gear. Cor like the level of the gear correlates with its appearance almost mm -hmm. and like again it just it adds that layer of progression i'm not just getting stronger but physically i'm looking more like a badass as we get higher level too mm -hmm. i think just removing that from the game removes a big incentive to progress i feel mm -hmm. yeah i see a lot of questions i see a lot of questions about like what if they add this like ladder system or what if they add like you know balancing changes the guys 
guys, we want to play classic, okay? Yeah. We're 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 classic men and women, okay? That's, that's, we haven't even played it yet. Just we haven't even played it, it yet. Yeah, just let, yeah. let the game be what it is. I think like now uh, that that being said, the one thing I do want that was not there in vanilla, I want like PTR realms where we can do like pre-made battlegrounds. Um, so you can play with your friends that might not be on your realm. I, right, I really, like do you guys agree with that? Uh, well, well, I want PTR like, dueling or, uh, or like tournament realms or something like that. Tournament yeah. Realms. That's, that's yep. kind of a separate thing though. That's not really, that's not really like in the scope of the game. That's more of like a PTR situation. Right. If they end up doing that, cause they did because that. Because it has no Burning impact Crusade. on your primary character. Right. It's right. Not even on the real server. Yeah. They did that in Burning Crusade with like arena servers. Like they had like the arena tournament servers and people could go there. Like that would be, that would be cool. What are we it's not even about the actual game, guys. Like it's it's uh it's like PTR servers. So it, um, I have a question for in vanilla. Was it, did you only do battlegrounds uh, against people mm -hmm. on your realm? Yes, until patch one twelve, I mm -hmm. believe that's when it was changed. So yeah, okay. until like towards the end. Yeah, just to hold on, just to clarify, I did not say add classic arenas. That's absolutely not what I said. What I said was having like a server where uh, basically like in, in Burning Crusade, what I remember them doing is you could character copy to to a PTR. You can take your retail character or something, and then they'd be on a they'd be on test server, public test, and uh, or it'd be like a tournament public test, right? And uh, basically, you could just duel people and and do stuff like that on on said server. It has nothing to do, no connection to the actual game or whatever where your actual character is on. But if they added something like this for people to go like test stuff or people to go duel and uh, maybe to do like events and whatnot, something like that would be cool. So. Yeah, <clears throat> that would yeah. That's not adding arenas. It's something that that is a whole that yeah. No, you should not add arenas in classic, and that's a whole nother discussion. Which uh, I don't think we have time for today because <laughs> I think I think it's uh, it's just about time for us to get going. So uh, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, obviously, again, Venruki, thank you so much for joining us, man. Venruki, uh, a, a new big fan of classic. So uh, you guys should go give Ben Ruki a follow. Uh, stay safe, of course. Tips out, baby. Uh, regulars on the show. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for joining us. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Stay safe will be streaming. So we'll be hosting Stay Safe. And uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. See you, boys. Later. Peace. See you guys.